Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. We should be live. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Trophy Room pre-show. I'm your host, Joseph. Alongside me, the greatest co-host, whoever is, whoever will be, Mr. Kyle Stevenson. How are you, sir? I'm okay. How are you? I am sick as a dog, dude. Boo. <laughs> I'm, you got the pack crud. Well. Yeah, man. Well, first, here's the thing. I want to do this live on air. I got one of these bad boys, okay? Listen, oh, okay. You got you to gotta keep protected. God knows. I was in a crowd of hundreds of, was it maybe thousands of people? Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean just hundreds? <laughs> There was many more than just hundreds of people. I don't know, man. I, <laughs> I was the guy that fudged the numbers on the inauguration back in 2016. <laughs> There's thousands of people in that. So you wait, about? you're you're about What's to do uh, oh, I, a COVID test right here live on air? Yeah, because well, because here's the thing. I I did it. I I did it yesterday, and I said I got nothing. Okay. Felt a little bit worse today in the morning, but now I feel a little bit better. But. Better safe than sorry, and you know what? I hate to say that I'm a role model, but that's exactly what I am right now. That's fair. Teaching people how to do it. Um, now, how do I open this bag? <laughs> Silk Candid, Cindaloo, Hida, Nisa, Jose Jimenez. What's up, everybody? What's up, everybody? You might see me cut myself. All right, well, Joe, well Joe's you know, taking care of himself. What, what do we think of this game is? You know what I mean? Asteroids. No, nah, it's not asteroids. I'm going to say laser <laughs> shoot, suit Larry. I really want to know why, why my dog's barking. I just found out she barks now. And uh, It's definitely not. Leisure suit, Larry. The fuck is this? Star Fox. No. Next Star Fox. There's no way this is Star Fox. Star Fox. Uh, yeah. I said he had, wow. She really has to stop soon. Or else we're, I'm going to put so her in a kettle. So it's, it's fine. Very rewarding. It's fine. She breaks my concentration. She and Don Jose says Returnal. I don't think it's Return Returnal. Yep, no, I think he's right. I think Returnal it is. N64 checkers. is the original platform. Do we think about checkers? I don't remember Spaceman in checkers. And Steph, we're not bored of. Jose, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Jose? Long time What's ago. It? I miss you, bud. Is it Blast Core? Was that a N64 <clears throat> game? Also, everybody, I tweeted this out that we are live on uh, YouTube's. I on the YouTube's. So, you know, I have zero idea. So here Hi, Matt. I got the plastic. I got the cardboard thing. Hello, Matt. Hello. Um, I'm doing a COVID test live on air because I don't know. Just keep Matt says just popping to say Jim Ryan's legacy is extravagance over substance. Trout swank. Ooh. I mean, we'll get into it, Matt, but hey, I appreciate it. I you. like that, Matt. I like that a lot. Elden Ring. I'm going to put Elden Ring for you, Jose. I'm going to put Elden Ring. Okay. This is it definitely said, Elden Ring. put three dots in the, the the thing. That's what I just did. I could have swore this was Blast Core. It's a 98. Do checkers. It's this not one's checkers. Got us. I think this one's got us good. It's not. Oh. Matt says Robotron. Hey, sure. I trust I trust Matt on these. All ready? Hell yeah, Matt! Good Saving job, the day. Matt. Good Saving job. Saving the day. I appreciate you. Are ready for you. this, guys? Going right up in there. <sighs> oh. oh, yeah. That's my cerebellum. Well, well, Joe is uh, tickling his brain. Oh, it's a little erotic. Since I missed last week. We're going to play. We're going to catch up. So we got lots to do here. I'm just going to throw out a random Here's guess. Once this Philadelphia cream cheese ad goes away. Now we wait 15 whole minutes. Put that right there. She's really got to stop barking. That's now annoying me. It's fine. I mean, it's we're in the pre show, but like. No, even if it's on know. the show, it's a, it's a dog. It's a dog. She Love you too, Matt. You know, it breaks my concentration. I like, eh. you know what? I like how you decided this dog. You don't even know. What? Show. I've had dogs my entire life. They're animals. They're going to bark. It's not a big deal. She's being a pain in my ass. Today. She's not left me alone for a minute. 
right. jump it around. Want me to throw the ball, catch the ball, throw the ball. Oh, this is, uh, she Splatoon. wants she wants to spend time with me. Oh no, Ooh. I'm sick. I'm trying to play Dragon's Dogma. I'm trying to get the Sorcerer class. You said the OG Splatoon. Yeah. Look at you. Nailed it. See, I know. I wasn't even paying attention. It's okay. Nailed it. Ooh, barrels, Skyrim. It's gotta be Skyrim, right? Let's do it. I mean, it's gotta be. Or Oblivion. I'll Let's go Oblivion. Oblivion. Let's go Oblivion. Nope. 82 on Metacritic. Amazon, go away. Let's do. Definitely modern, because that's signing on a house, so... Kind of modern. I would go... I, it's like, definitely not be... Elder Scrolls. No, this is... Let's do Homefront. No, really? I mean, probably not. No, you're right. You know, you're right. No, let's not even use that one. But this could be like a butt to a rifle. That's what I'm thinking. It's a rifle for sure. You know, let's just let's just put it in. If we're wrong, we're wrong. You're wrong, we're wrong. We got guesses. So we got guesses, Brian. Okay, you're wrong. How dare you? <laughs> All right, so it was on PS2, 360, Xbox and 360. Definitely fant uh, fantastical. So if it's but on this PS2, is like it's not signing to a house. I'm so confused. Right? It's if it's with barrels, like in a. Dungeon. It has to be like. Uh. So I, okay. Yes. I, I will just go throw out thief. Okay. No, it's not Thief. It is a stealth game, though! Hitman. Hitman. Right. What? Which Hitman? Uh, Great question. Let's Absolution? Hitman 2. Let's do Hitman 2. Or Blood, Blood Money? Was on it. Let's do Blood Money. Okay. Hey, there it is. <laughs> nice. Was... Well, we would have gotten it in that barcode. One of the fucking best games ever made right there. Hitman. The world of assassinations. What's going on at this party? Uh, what, what what Christmas party is he at right here? Are are you seeing are you seeing the dress I'm code here, it. Joe? I'm seeing it. It's it's a wild one. It's pretty crazy. I had a joke lined up. It was timely, but not appropriate. Okay. All right. What's this? Let's take a look at this. Uh, is this an apex? Yeah, it could be. Yeah, it very well could be, actually. Is this, is this an Apex Legends? This, is, this could be an Apex Legends. It is not an Apex Legends. Oh, 71. 71? So it's a good game. It's a good game. No one said 70s. Back Jose, back. you are on one today. I like, no, I like where Jose's head's at. And honestly, we, we, need, we need that energy. I hope I can bring it tonight. What was that arena shooter... From Cliffy B that went nowhere. Um, Lawbreakers? J Lawbreakers. I was going to say Jailbreakers. Lawbreakers. That's a good one. Nah, I could have sworn no. that was it. Only though. on PC, so this is out of our, our realm. But only on PC. Where is this? We got some foliage. That's definitely foliage. It's a portal. It's a portal. Was Splitgate only PC? Ooh, that could be it. Was it only PC, it, though? I think so. Hi, Todd Oxra. What up, Todd? What's going on, bud? Yeah, it has to be Splitgate. Boom. Again, make there sure, it is. Wow, we're so good in this. Uh, make sure y'all, you know, you like, you share, you subscribed. Hit the notifications. The dog's ooh. really got to stop fucking barking. It's getting to me now. Ooh. Uh, ooh, wee. What is this? Whatever it is, it looks like a video game Kai Kai would like. Uh, Since I missed a week, I'm going to start talking uh, in third person, by the way. Just so you I, know. I, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, what I learned at boating school is... I'm just... It might be too recent. Yeah. Oh, I'm going Pacific, Pacific Drive. Drive. Which I still need I to mean, pick up and play. Hey! Look at wow, that! What? Hell yes! Wow, All uh, right. I, I, I mean, at, my statements, my statement stands. It looks like a yeah. Kyle S video game that I want to play. Yeah, yeah, because I also think a part of me thinks that Twitter suppressed the trophy room account too, which is a big. Mm. 
I, just I have thoughts. I, just... I have thoughts on that, Joe. What, uh, what's that? I think what you tweet thoughts? too much. <laughs> I really don't think I do. I thought I did while I was at PAX. Well, I was drunk the, myself. the reason why I say that is, did was there not a plan if you didn't subscribe to Twitter Blue or whatever it was that you were only allowed to tweet a certain amount a day? Was there like a cap on tweets? Probably. That's the, that that's sounds the only like a reason stupid why. idea, so that's probably... That's, that's, that's the that's... only reason I bring it up. <laughs> Alright, what's this thing? I don't have... I, I don't know. Oh. Okay. Uh, hear me out, Joe. World of Warcraft. Well, yes. These are arrows. Yep. It's a World of Warcraft. You think it's wrong? I was thinking this is a Bethesda game because this looks like an NPC talking to you. That could be it, too. Well, like, with the background and they're facing you, it's just off to the side. Is that the t- tells me World Warcraft? <laughs> well, you could do... Well, you you want to say one. that again? World Warcraft. World Warcraft. I like World Warcraft. It's my favorite game. You guys like World Warcraft? We're just God, going OG? Is so... No. No. 85%. I... You're oh, right. I think this is... This is a cursor. This is definitely Oblivion joint. You think Oblivion? Yeah. It's wild that we guessed that before. If this is it, nope. No. PS4, PS5. What? This is an Xbox Series game. So this this skipped. Okay. That doesn't make this is sense. this is totally zoomed in, right? I mean, so Candace is Dragon Dogma too. Is it too soon for that? No, <coughs> Dragon Dogma ain't on PS4. Oh, good call. Oh yeah, wait, this is on Xbox One too. Yep. Yeah, uh, hmm. yes. It looks first person. It looks first person. Ooh, Todd, it. that's a good guess. What did, what did Todd guess? Elder Scrolls Online. Okay. I Yeah, why not? No. We shooting fo- fo- fools? Fools? Mystery Adventure RPG. What? And that's a Glock. That's like a modern gun. Huh? RPG with a modern gun. Props this don't look it. great, so this is obviously from the PS4 version, or the last gen version. You think so? I just, I mean... Talk about this. These arrows in the first one are throwing me. Right? The loop. Like, I think they're getting a little bit of everything, I'm gonna be real. And this cursor looks so cursor much older up. than yeah. a game that and came out this five. It's a. I don't know. Let's let's take it one more jab at it. Is this a Bethesda joint? Is. Uh, this isn't. This isn't a. This is good. Resident Evil game, is it? So far, I'm in the clear, Kyle. Good. This is an yeah. RE game, is it? You know what? Let's try RE Village. That's that's too. I don't Ari remember Village. arrows though. The, Not evil. <laughs> evil. <laughs> Resident Evil, bit bitch. It's just Resident Evil. Nope. Oh, 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 oh. 2001? It was that mod for an Elder Scrolls game that made it Forgotten City, Forbidden oh. City. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is it Forgotten? Is it gun in there? I think it's Forgotten City. Yeah. Boom, there it is. Wow, I would never have gotten that. That totally makes sense then why it looks like an Elder Scrolls game. The... I guess so. <laughs> I... <laughs> Alright. Just... <laughs> I know there's tons of different endings, I think. Okay. Alright. Hey. Good job. Right. Good job. I'm, I'm 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 queued up for two more. No, we got we gotta we gotta, you know. Yeah, Catch but up. I'm a sicky. I'm a sicky boy. You gotta wait till the test is done, right? That's all good. Yeah, it's been fifteen I got minutes. It. 
wasteland. It's a land that looks like shit. That's just, just two. No. no. 86. What, who's this boy? You look sad. I, I don't know. So, Candace is Desperado. I'm going to go with Desperado. Let's do it. Let's do Desperado. Desperado. Which one? I'm just going to say one dead or alive. Nope. Nope. Level. Oh. This is this a fallout. It's just like an old school fallout. It's in the series. It, yeah, so it's Fallout 2. Oh, dude, I can't wait to talk about Judas, by the way. Oh, shit. Nice. We nailed it. Nice, nice. Oh, cool. Oh, oh, thanks, wow. game. All right, cool. Heavy Best rain. Too. <laughs> no, shit. That this little have... lad. 77. Half life. No, it got it scored better than seventy seven. I don't know the Weller hat is getting me. What up, friends? Oh, Nisa says Massachusetts slang is wicked. You need to use wicked to describe things from that area. Gotcha. Oh, that's wicked, Smack. Uh, I didn't learn any new Boston slang. Clearly, Todd. <laughs> no. Uh, what is that? Uh, I'm going to say James Bond Nightfire. Ooh. You know Look what? It's you. not here, so I'm going to say Bloodstone. No, okay. No. PS2, PC. GameCube. <laughs> is this hit or, hit or run? Let's do it. Let's is do this it. a Simpsons hit and run? No, it's no. not. It's a sport. What? Is this... A, is this... No, it would say Dreamcast. I was like, yeah. Crazy Taxi? What is this scene? Nisa, do you live in Massachusetts? Nisa, if you if you did, we missed out on, on Where were you? I tried to touch everyone's face there. And look what happened. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> uh, Kyle, it looks like I'm clear. I don't got it. Congratulations. Yeah. I'm just going to say Crazy Taxi to move it along. No. 11 out of 50. Tony Hawk. Tony Hawk Pro Skater, but which one? American System, Wasteland? You think? I, I think it's Wasteland. Yeah, good job, Joe. The last good I, one, right? I would have never. The last good one. No, the remake was good. Oh, yeah. I even... Silent Hill. Okay. Is, do you think this is a scope here? I'm thinking that's a creepy bed. Ooh, creepy bed. Or Joe like a creepy it. trailer. Right? Yeah. Joe said creepy bed. Right. I'm going to say four. No? Okay. Ziegler. Ziegler. This is, uh... Is, is this the old 90s thing everybody freaked out about? Huh? The aliens... What? Bangler, right, or whatever. I, uh, I don't know what you're talking the about. The X-Files. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't know. Fuji. I was just you say lived it. in Worcester. I, I, dude, I, I, that's where I, I uh, almost uh, where I, oh. I, I thought I had it with the division there for a second. 360. PS3. Something tells me Rainbow Six doesn't look Rainbow Six ish. What up, AIDS? You old I'm bitch. Just, I'm just going to say Hawks. That, that game, Hawks. Hawks? They're like, the, <laughs> they're like we'd rather you not. <laughs> I'm just going to put Hawk in then. Who is it? What? I... Forbes? It's not singularity. Uh, Area 51's not it. I mean, the, not a big guess. That's what I meant. I mean, maybe it is a Rainbow Six. Yeah, Rainbow, Six Vegas? Rainbow Six Vegas? I mean... Right, because they all have dumb names. 
Why is this a combo? Well, let's do it. No. Wait. Oh, oh my god, I remember this. Prepare, Why do I remember this? Prepare turret. Is this... this... Oh my god, is this Brink? No. Remember Brink? I remember Brink. There's no way this is Brink. Let's just give it a go. Didn't you have to like to do dumb shit? I, Brink thing? was like parkour. I don't remember repairing oh, anything. Oh, is it really? Hey, you nailed it though. Look at you. Man, I regret selling so many people on that game. I I apologize. All right, we got a few more. We got a few more. We're getting there. Uh, uh I want I want to say Spyro right off the gate. Spyro. This looks like a Spyro le level. Okay. Dawn of the Dragon. No. 84. 84, I'm not a good idea. Oh, I was going to say Prince of Persia. Yep. But that's yep. 87. The, the new one's still at 87? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Let's just go Sands of Time. Oh, okay, it is a Prince of Persia game. This is the new one. It's... It's one million percent the new one. Okay, fair enough. Because it's still taking Metacritic, open. not Open Critic. Open Critic can be uh, bigger. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's where that's where it kind of it tricked me a little bit. All right, four left, Joe. Let's do this. Ooh, uh, what's that one uh, cute little indie game that's coming to PlayStation? It, Planet uh, of Lana. Planet of Lana. Nope. Three golds. No Metacritic score. So this is now an e bombs world game. <laughs> One million percent. Love that. Um, Angry Birds. I mean, sure. I got no better guess. Come on, guys. This is a real game. If I could play it on a browser in a mobile game, it's not real. Game. Is it balloons? Go for it. Oh, shit. Mm, mm, mm. I'm. I got nothing. AIDS. I'm sick. Marvel Snap. I'm sick, and he's auto brawler. What the fuck? This is the first one we get stumped on, huh? Released 2021. Never seen this shit in my life. Fuji knows it. Fuji, I'll give you a second. Okay. We haven't lost yet. We haven't lost yet, <sighs> Fuji. This is on you. Come on, Fuji. I'm sending it to this. you through the internet for you to say it yeah, and then send Fuji. it right back to me. Yep, it's a mobile game. It's, it's a, a mobile browser game. game. It's a mobile game, a browser game. Auto battler. Battler. Auto battler. Turn based strategy. Turn based strategy. Tempt. This, is this <laughs> Temtem? -tem? <laughs> it's not Temtem. -tem. It's not. Are you sure? There's no way. She says, oh, she can't think of the name. No. Look at your phone. Fuji, look at your phone. It should be on there. Give us a letter. It's not Temtem. I, 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 I concede. Oh, wait, wait. After Logan says Hollow Knight, you think this is Hollow Knight Silk Song? I see it. Okay. It's not going to come to me, though. I'm I don't just know. Gonna, I don't play mobile games. I'm just going to play Caterpillar. She remembered Caterpillars. Let's move on to the next one. Team Wood Games. The Unwashed Parts. Oh, this is this, this is kind of pissing me off. This, this shouldn't be included. I'm going to be honest. How dare you. Super Auto Pets, Dewani Rakshas. Okay. Dewani, we're going for with it. Hey, the streak is alive. Todd definitely cheated, but I like that. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Earthblade got delayed oh, out of 2024. Boo. It's okay. Take your time. Take your time. Take your That's time. That's the team, correct? Yes. Extremely okay games. That's the studio name, by the way. That's not me saying extremely okay games. They make great games. Perfect Dark. Okay. <laughs> Can I get a Perfect Dark? Oh. Is this the new one? Yes. 
no. Ooh, 61. Still a good game. <laughs> uh... I'm just going to put the bouncer. Oh, Duwadi put that in there. Okay. Uh, Duwadi came in for PSP. This. Oh, this is a PSP game? Is this Logan Shadow? Let's do it. Second filter. No. Nope. Third person action adventure. Hold oh, on. Nope. That is a Twi'lek. So put in Star Wars Battlefront PSP. Which one is it? Uh, do Renegade Squadron. I think it's Renegade Squadron. Nope. Do Star Wars Battlefront. So in 2006, so it's definitely 2004. <laughs> it's not 2005. No. Is it just Star Wars Battlefront 2? Yeah, do two. Do two. No. Who's software? For Ubi. So it's not Battlefront. No, it's. Because huh. I thought there's only yeah there's only three PSP games, but this isn't Battlefront. Because Battlefront's EA. This is Ubi. Yeah, but they could have done this is Lucas and Rebellion. Is this is the Clone Wars to you. Uh, could be. Oh, this is our last guess too. Shit. Yeah, this is our last guess. The new droid Inter army. Yeah, it doesn't look. This is interesting. It's like the first. It's not bounty hunter. I know that one. No. Just do put down elite squadron. It's let's see if that one's it. Are you sure? Yeah, because it's like it legit. There's only like. I'm gonna be very. I'm gonna be very surprised because this. I could have sworn only the battlefront games. Uh, Rob, PSP. Oh no! Go back. Oop. <laughs> or wait, one sec. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, here it is. Ready for it? Yeah. Lethal Alliance. Okay, this is on you. If we lose, this is on you. We're not gonna lose. Hey, there it is. Thank you. You looked it up. Never lost in my life. Yeah, I, I did because I was very. <laughs> I mean, I listen. I fight. Listen, dude. I'm sick. <laughs> you know? And I wanted to, that actually looked cool enough that I would go out there and go to this game play that though. Guess the game over. So top that's why, down. guys. That's what you're gonna have to work with tonight. Okay. That's how zonked I am. Okay. What's this? I'm just doing mythology just to. <laughs> Definitely a strategy game. Yeah. Uh, uh, is this an Empires? No, it doesn't look is like Is it, it a Civ? No, Civs are octagons. Fair. Um, is this a Homeworld? Let's do Homeworld. What up, Savoy? Whoa, hold on, Whoa. Switch. Tendo Swanch? Oh, is this, this is um, a fantasy Advance star? Wars? Advance Wars? No. Why not? Magic Attack? Uh. Are isn't Advance Wars like tanks and whatnot? Oh, could this be like uh? I, f I feel a Fire like... Emblem. Put it. Put a Fire Emblem. Put in. Uh, put a Fire. Which yeah, Fire I mean, Emblem? Fire Emblem though? was like two weeks ago now, but. Uh, hmm. Let's do Advance Wars. Just do Advance Wars. Oh, it's engaged. There we go. Oh, to be married. Oh thought, wow, yeah, that makes I, a lot. Of I sense. thought it was a um, a fantasy star. That makes a lot. All of right, sense. last All one. Right, last one, and then we're gonna do the regular show. Oh, what, what is this? Is Spyro. Satisfactory. Damn. Too old for Metacritic. 
Shield. You know what this has given me, Joe? What's that? And be real proud of me. Right. I think this is Star StarCraft 2. The ball's in your court, sir. I think it is StarCraft 2. Or 1. Let's go 1. Okay. Damn. Okay. Or it's dog. Warcraft. No, that's definitely... It's Warcraft. That's definitely the Warcraft one, yeah. World Warcraft? World Warcraft? Oh, damn. It's not 1. Oh, the Warcraft 2. I was like, I know that percentage thing. Whoa, whoa. Job done. Boom. Hell yeah. I used to play the shit out of this one. Really? And StarCraft. Those are the only th games that would work on my PC that I owned. What? Okay. I enjoyed it. Dog started barking again. I love that. Oh, she does that. It's my favorite. Okay. How's everybody doing tonight? Are we ready to talk about PlayStation not being dead? Being very much alive. Okay. To be married. To be married. Okay. Let me get rid of all this. I miss a good one. It's okay. I'm... Let me get this up. Uh, restore chat. Now I can see chat. Where it's supposed to be. Hold on. Right, yeah, you this take holds... your talk. Oh, I'm talking to myself, by the way. Oh, if you could, could you read the Patreon uh, list of folks this week? I guess so. Oh, oh. Thank you, kids. I'm sick. <laughs> you turn into the biggest baby. I'm sick. <laughs> I don't want to sneeze. <laughs> Everybody hears that I'm gross. They make fun of me and stuff. All right, you ready? I guess. All right, chat. We will see you in 16 seconds. <laughs> Wait, no longer greatness has arrived. Welcome to episode 369, who of the Trophy Room, a PlayStation podcast made by the players for the players. I'm your host, Joseph, a.k.a. Mr. Badbit, and it is here where me and my best friend Kyle talk about the latest, the greatest in all things PlayStation. Of course, this week we are chatting about Sony Ben's new game. Jim Ryan, don't call them NFTs, PS Stars, Bobblehead. Tons of flash news. Kyle finally gets to talk about MLB The Show 24 and what we played at PAX East and so much more as we do it live each and every Wednesday night over at youtube.com slash PS Trophy Room at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and then on your podcast feeds the very next day alongside me the greatest co-host whoever is whoever will be mr kyle stevenson how did you not get sick at pax because i wash my hands with soap i, I wash my I hands all the time i don't touch my face i did that and i am always strapped with hand sanitizer i forgot about that too <laughs> mm, mm, mm. well it sounds like a you problem i uh, very much is listen man we we're hold, back from hold on yeah hold on Okay. You said when I saw you last week, which was great seeing you and giving you a big hug and Likewise. hanging out for what how, the amount of time we did. I wish there was more time. You said Kyle. Yes. Kev did a great job. You did. But, but you need to listen uh -huh. because I had something to say. Uh -huh. Am I yeah, not on my usual mic? Hold on. On my end, you are. Maybe not on. Uh, I'm, oh, uh, yes. Yeah, no, I'm definitely not. I'm coming through the webcam. Oh. <laughs> you want hey, me to restart Zencaster for you? No, Zencaster should be fine. Okay, cool. Just for everyone watching live. That should be totally be better. Um, you were like, yeah, hey, listen to the show. Listen to the first minute or so because we have some things to say about your quote unquote stardom. newfound stardom. Yeah. And you're over here trying uh -huh. to say. That I'm too big for my britches now to show up? <laughs> hey, fuck yeah. you. <laughs> Get out of here. Oh, oh, whoa. This There's is a no children's show. This is not a children's show. <laughs> it hasn't been a children's show since we started. That's true. No, I find, listen, you're not too big for your britches. No. I found out the hard way. I try to get, uh, you know, my Paxi tickets, which very fast, by the way, but they were very like, 
one per person, you son of a gun. I was yeah, like, okay, and, and also you were like, the whole story was you texted me while I was, yeah. uh, well, I whether I was, oh, no, I wasn't up there yet. It was the day before I left. Sure. Hey, can you grab me, my, me and my friend's badge? I yeah. go, I, I didn't say it in a weird way or mean way. I was just like, hey, I don't think they will allow me. It's, you know, they need your ID. They need a business card. They didn't check business cards this time, which I thought was weird. Uh, yeah. But even then, Joe, what am I supposed to do? Just tell them who you are. No, no, no. With the badge. Just wait oh, around just until you me. show up. <laughs> like, yeah, just you... give it to me. Whatever. Well, should then in that case, just go to a will call and pick them up yourself. Yeah, I mean, listen, I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know all the semantics or whatever. Like, I, um, am, I am not your assistant to pick up your badges and then hold on I mean, to them. I no, no, not a, no, uh-uh, no, no. <laughs> No, that's no, no. Fine. That's fair. You did get me coffee this one time, but that's fine. No, uh, listen, Paxis was. You did. <laughs> you did. Paxis was wonderful the first time uh, uh, we got media access. Shout out Shout to out. y'all who got us there. But you came in. You, you were working the floor. How yeah, how but... is it now? How how was it working the floor opposed to, you know, being a a civilian now? You know. Uh. This PAX was weird. It was. Not not just because of the show floor, which we'll get into at some point, but yeah. it was just weird because this is my first PAX or first convention as somebody working in the industry and mm-hmm. shadowing our good friend Mike, who actually had a client there, and me just kind of figuring out how this works from a games PR perspective side of things even though i've interacted with enough as as a normie or as a media person to kind of know um so that was strange i only played three games all packs really and and that's just because like i was either a making sure they were good b running around and talking with people and and discussing like six one stuff and just seeing friends this 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 packs was uh, what's up, Darren? In chat, Ed, Ed Darren says it best: is the post pack depression is hitting so hard? It's because yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed, and what I think Pax is now going to be moving forward, it's just seeing everybody, yep, and just hanging out. Games are secondary, just running Always. in and and just chatting and talking, and like I miss Making everybody. I miss I miss you. I miss, I miss everyone I met and. Yeah. Either for the first time, or I I only seem to run into you at PAX, which is strange. Um, yeah. That, to me, is now my the reason why I'm excited for PAX, is to see everybody kind of thing. Well, I got sick. You did? <laughs> well, you, like you just said, you touched your face. That's on you. <laughs> yep. And I forgot hand sanitizer. But, like, I made it a, you know, I'm washing my hands. I saw a few people not wash their hands. Oh, yeah. No, people are Or disgusting. make a lazy attempt. They're like, oh, no soap. They walk away. You know there's other things it's e- in there. It's either no soap or I'm just going to run my pinky finger under the water for half a second. Yeah, what is that? Stop doing that. We just went through a gigantic. <laughs> We're still kind of going through it. It's still not gone. Right? You know? I. It's just, it's it's wild. That being said, I, you know, I may, I'm taking precautions. Uh, I'm, I'm negative, baby. Wave that, that flag. Woo! Uh, wave it around. Wave it around. Um. But yeah, I was surprised. Like this was the first time going into a convention uh, since the end times, so it was uh, it was really interesting. Like you have like that like you know fear in the back of your head. Now that said, I came out of PAX with a broken back and uh, and the PAX crud. But coming in at the first time as a uh, media, to me it was crazy because I did everything I wanted to do in the first hour. Like, pretty much all the big major boosts I hit, I hit effectively. I got what I, 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 I came here for, and I was like, okay, cool. Now let's find all the indie stuff. So the media badge, awesome. I just wish it was at least Thursday and Friday, uh, the first hour of, of yeah, both days. Yeah, so could get a, Yeah, a nice, clear run of it. But nonetheless, uh, I mean, we'll talk about it in the What You've Been Playing I played a lot there Mm -hmm. and then immediately got sick and pulled my back. So also, yeah. Hey, Pax for the future. Let's not get a gigantic booth that is paid for by Saudi Arabia. That what's that? 
you remember that the Kidia Gaming gigantic booth with the giant portals? Oh, that's that that's was for an e, a virtual esports arena, and it's all funded by Saudi Arabia. All right. Where you you walked in, there was nothing to do with the booth. It just went yeah. prices, and apparently they were yelling at people to not take any video or or, or like actually talk to them about what what the product is and whatnot. Really? Like, well, real bad. That packs. makes yeah, real that bad. makes sense why that Saudi prince was there. But yeah, nonetheless, I, I, oh, to to your point though, I do think every day should have uh, some media yeah. time there, whether it's it bleeds into the normal show hours or it just moves up even an hour earlier which would mm -hmm. again it's too early both for the exhibitors and for media because yeah. pax is tiring um it is there needs to be a little bit maybe even after the show f floor closes have a sure. media hour there too uh yeah because there's so much there and an hour for everybody is not enough time it's just not enough because you're like okay 20 minutes here 20 minutes there yeah again uh, gonna be talking about a lot of stuff uh, in the in the what you've been playing, but uh, yeah, it, it was a fun time. A very weird yeah. PAX because they chose to put it in the middle of GDC, which uh, well, next year we don't got to worry about it because PAX is in May. Yeah, my birthday weekends. Which, honestly, far better. Yeah. I, I would, I would want that to be the start off of like the summer's game fest stuff. I, you know, I, I I see that being the reason for that move being twofold. A it is an answer to like the GDC crossover sure. and B now that E3 is no longer around, maybe PAXs can make a big play to make a gigantic show out of it Yeah, to kind of yeah. like lead into IGN live or whatever they're going to call their rebranding and whatnot. Cause exactly that, that is the thing that I think was missing. Obviously I love the Indies there. Uh, there were amazing indie games, uh, but not having on the bigger indie side of things like Devolver not being there. Bummer. Uh, uh, I always say the name of the studio wrong. Uh, Easebird, Easebeard, great indie publisher and indie devs there. Always have great games. Uh, World of Horror, Demon School. Uh, okay. They're usually always there. Have a great booth. Uh, uh, like Annapurna. Like where? Yeah. Where you at? <laughs> like I, it, right, them yes. not being there, I felt big time. But, um, yeah. Still had a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. Still yeah. tons of games to be had. Great panels. And what I'm thinking for next year, mm -hmm. what if we do a Trophy Room community like meetup? What I if that's the that. first one? Yeah. Because I met so many community, like, real talk. It was very weird getting stopped by so many people. Yeah. <laughs> so it was, it was really, it was awesome. Very humbling. And uh, I, if you I think ran into me great. and I was out of it, I was out of it. I'm sorry. Yeah. I hope I met your expectations. Yeah, I walked out of the bathroom. Someone goes like, "Hey, I'm I'm from the Discord." I'm like, "Hello." It's very loud. <laughs> so whoever said hi to me, say hi to the Discord. I'll, I'll give you a good wish. Um, but yeah, no, it was it was a whole lot of fun. Can was, I can I highlight one thing that I think was a huge highlight yeah. of the show? Outside of games, outside of the people, uh, Ben Star is an amazing human being. <laughs> very nice. Extremely nice. Um, Wants to come on the show again? I, anytime, Ben. Anytime. Anytime, ben. Uh, but the, the reason why I bring Ben up is we saw what I think was my favorite panel I've ever seen. Oh, God. Yeah, the video us. video game Tinder panel yep. was an amazing time. Yeah. <laughs> the premise yeah. was they I don't think there's video version. I think the audio version somewhere. But uh, Ben was on there. Jenny Windham of Wholesome and um, Kepler. Uh, Anya. I forgot where she's at. Eric from Destructoid, Kenneth Shepard from Kotaku. Kotaku, and I think that's it. No, there's more. And Kate Sanchez from But Why Though. Yeah, you're right. um, yeah, yeah. Basically, they just said Eric made fake the Tinder profiles for video game characters, and none Where of the panel knew there. about it. And they just said whether they're going to swipe right or left. Yeah. And Ben crushed it. <laughs> he really ben did. Ben was on one. <laughs> and it Let was me a tell great you, the, time. The, the turbo sexy one. Boo? Oh man! Ooh wee, ooh wee! The sexy boo from like uh, yeah. Mario. Yeah, let's go. Let's yeah. go. Oh, uh, that was a good time. All right, y'all. Listen, that's enough of packs. Let's talk about PlayStation. Of course, before we do that, a little bit of housekeeping. We got the Trophy Room merch store, baby. Help support the show and look good doing it. Head on over to that link down below. Uh, also, the By the Players Community Game Show. 
This month's game is High Fi Rush. If you want to talk about High Fi Rush, if you want to come in and you know talk to the crew, uh, it's this April sixteenth uh, at two p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Two thirty. Need more information? Two thirty. Sorry. Uh, if you need more information, go talk to Drellish or Marcus O'Neill in the Discord uh, link down below for all that and. The Last of Us talk will be up this week. I'm sorry, I just got bombarded with packs and mm-hmm. I got sick, but that will be up by the time this episode's up. Yeah. That said, Kyle, because I'm sick and I'm sneezing and congested and breathing from the mouth like a sicko, um, it's time for the Patreon pitch. Uh, hold on. I like how you just yeah. skip over the other housekeeping thing I put in there. You're oh, like, what? let I me read the be... first one. Let me skip this one. And let me go to the no, I th- uh, no, I thought <laughs> you already did that one. No, 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 no. Th- this oh, is going to be a new standard going forward. Oh, uh, what I want to do, because okay. I had such a great time. Um, I'm not going to say every Monday, but we're going to do MLB Mondays with me, Kyle. Uh, we're going to do another one on April 1st, this upcoming Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern, once my work meeting is over. Uh, I'm just going to play MLB The Show and chat. What's going on in the movie while I'm playing? Because I love baseball so much, and I would like to have that outlet to play the show and have you guys hang out with me and watch me take the wild aces and hopefully win some games this time. Now as I'm getting more comfortable with the with the gameplay loop, so yeah, uh, and will be the Mondays are going to start up uh, th- this upcoming Monday. Fair enough, this should be fair a good enough. time on you uh, right here on YouTube. That's where you find YouTube. it. Yeah, uh, it, it's time for a Patreon pitch again because I'm coffee. I'm, 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 I'm sneezing all over the... I'm sick. I'm, I'm sick. just going to tell us the pick, pitch. I'm going to hand it over to Kyle. He's going to read the list of folks. And then I'm going to find out why the dog's barking so much. I don't know what's Again, going on. Let let the little little baby girl... It, it's annoying me. It's thing. annoying me. Yeah, you know, it's okay. Yeah, it's she, she's, a, she's becoming a little much. She's you know? a dog. Listen, if you like what we do each and every week, uh, whether we got you through a long car ride, a tough day at work, whatever your situation may be, it definitely helps us out if you head on over to patreon.com slash PS Trophy Room. It helps support the show. This month and next month are our big uh, uh, bills that we got to pay for both Zencaster, for Adobe, all the stuff that keeps this show running, uh, and they're big bills. So if you really could head on over, even if it's just a buck, it really does help us out. It keeps the show going. With that, Kyle, would you like to read the list of producers this week? Our newest Patreon members, Cringe at the Bronze Tier and Amazay 715 at the Gold Tier. Apologies if I butchered those names. Premium members, Todd Burowitz and Toxic. Platinum members, Jay Shea, Jedi Master Ren, Cowboy Danger D, Jonas Young, The Green Gorilla Gamer, Chaotic Monkey, Ryuko Kill 90, Steven Flesh, Shrivels and Bits, Bertos Maximus, Chris, Hybrid 748, Matt Valdez, Silkanet, Dasime, Jatus Von Metal, Mitchell Grambling, and Randy Hale. Our gold members, Cypher Primus, Doth Simon, the Pie Man, Jesse Garcia, JB the Purple Monkey, Hide Doors, Katie, Katie, Kevin Mitchell, Kevin Diaz, Marcus O'Neill, Red Arrow, A- Ageless Hermit, Androzo- Androzor, <laughs> Astronaut gotcha. Jr., not to be confused with Astronaut Senior, Witcher Gamer, Robbie Bobby Miller, Brenton Zachary, Captain Logan, Final Van, XZ, Handbone, JD Dillinger, Stone Cold, E.T., Tino Six Speed, N. Johnson, Sean McKenzie, Rick Arrington, Spam and Bammon, Matthew King, Duh Overlord, Dewani Raksha, Raksha, Drellish, Rick Davis, Steph Milder, Samuel Nestling, Maximum Cartage, Solo, and Suddy. I touched his face. It was beautiful. You sure did. Maybe that's why you got Maybe sick. pizza. Touching other people's faces than touching your faces? Well, yeah, that was. He Personal said it's a, space. It's, well, he said it was like a. It's like a family tradition. You touch each other's face and then you touch each other's pizza. You put it in the pizza oven and then you have a nice. What if there's dinner. no pizza nearby? Oh, you just put it in each other's mouths. You put your fingers in each other's mouths. Whoa. For, and I'd like you to know the dog was not just bothering me, it was also bothering my brother. He put her up in the cage, in the kennel. Oh. She's got to learn. She's got to learn. You can't just bark that much you gotta have some discipline but know? she but she loves you she uh, just wants to be with you we just we don't even know why she was barking so if you hear some you know some whining some mild barks yeah the, the, she's still a puppy and it's 
Odyssey, you go, you go, Joe. It's been long enough. Uh, trust me, I know. It if hasn't I, I been put that a, long. Patreon.com slash PS Trophy Room. Help me afford more doggy classes for her because one, once a week is not enough. Kyle, it is time to do what we do each and every week. It is time to square up the news. First bit of news uh, for... Hold on. It's been a while. Come back to me. What? What's the rigmarole? How do we get into it? I don't know. First bit of news that needs to be squared up. There it is. <laughs> Chris Culkin. <laughs> Jesus, Wait, I don't know Just read. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Days Gone developer Ben Studio is working on a AAA live service game. As originally spotted by Game Rant, Ben Studio has posted a job listing looking for a lead project manager in game development. Quote, Sony Ben Studio, world-class creator of Days Gone, Uncharted Golden Abyss, and Siphon Filter, is seeking outstanding talent to join our passionate and creative family in crafting our next high-profile AAA title, the description reads. It then goes on to say that their role will be to, quote, plan and track release schedules against the defined live roadmap, end quote, and that they will have to be able to lead the team in its key phases of development, which it identifies as, quote, pre-production, production, and live services, end quote. It later says the candidate will will require, quote, a deep understanding of game development cycles, processes, and latest trends with an emphasis on live operations, and hands-on game development experience and leadership roles shipping AAA live service games, end quote. It also says that ideally, the, su- the successful applicant will have, quote, experience redefining studios from traditional box product focused game development into live service development studios in a key leadership role, end quote, making it all but certain that Ben's next game will have live service elements as its central focus. Back in 2021, Sony confirmed that Ben was working on a new IP, which was, quote, building on the deep open world systems that they developed with Days Gone, end quote. It's not clear if the job being ad- advertised is for this same project. Kyle Stevenson, out of this job list, we don't know if it's central. I, I That's like an assumption. Can we We don't agree? know it's what? It's, they're saying that live service is at the center. We don't know that. Hmm. We could. We know that there will be live service elements. Well, it not, does. It does say leadership in shipping AAA live service games. Okay, fair enough. So that's more than just an element. That's like a full. All right, Chris, on... I'll put the gun down. <laughs> I'm sick. Remember, <laughs> you know, I'm seeing double. Um, but I still don't see why everybody's upset. I saw like the internet reaction is the internet reaction. That this is like this is the worst. I already saw people like, oh, rest in peace, bend. Like, really, you know, like the, you know, there's folks working there. They're looking at that shit. You know, yeah. it's just like, come on. I, to me, this I don't, I don't see the game, right? Therefore, I can't judge judge it. If I can't see the gameplay, what the game is gonna look like. You know, the trailer for it. If all I'm seeing is reading a, a goddamn LinkedIn, mm-hmm. I'm my excitement level is my excitement level. Like, this is it. I'm I'm at the four, right? Rightfully yeah. so, any game. But I'm not gonna just toss it away because there's live service elements to it. I don't know. What say you, Kyle? When you read this, what was your first reaction? Uh first reaction is not my favorite thing in the world just because I'm not a live service person. Sure, but uh, like you said, we haven't seen it, so let's wait until we throw stones. Um, it is very well could be a, a situation where this is in addition to that other game. Th- right, th- this could just be something because this is still uh, what did I believe this said the pre-production part of it. Yeah. So this could this is very much in the early stages, and we've known that they have gotten to work on their that other follow up to Days Gone, I think within the last two years. Well, not follow up, but a separate. No, I mean the the next IP, whatever it may be. Um. So this this live service game, quote unquote, could just be in addition to, which is fine. But I also, whenever I hear this news. I also think of caution just because of what Naughty Dog has said and why they canceled the Last of Us um, multiplayer game because they would have to change their whole studio around to 
mold it to make the live service and then that would be the only thing that they could do and granted bend right. isn't on the same level uh, within playstation studios as a naughty dog or a santa monica they make great games i love days gone i yeah. unabashedly i love that game uh i think it got a bad rap um but I don't know. I, I think it's not all doom and gloom. Let's wait to see what this is. It could be super cool. It, all it takes is for one studio that's making a live service game to right. find the one thing that makes it different enough and have a really good hook. And we don't know anything about this. So let's just wait. Right. It's like, why can't we like, listen, when you see the trailer and when you see actual gameplay, we get to judge, right? You're like, we could be like, okay, I see where you're at. This sounds cool. Like, if it's just like, listen, we'll talk about Marvel Rivals in a sec, but like, if it's just like, oh, here's an Overwatch clone. Okay, then we'd be like, ah, oh, damn it. All right. It's a bummer. But like, if there's something, you know, unique, original to it, yeah. you know, it, it's weird how we poo-poo this idea. Say Ben can't do it, but like, we're all obsessed with Helldivers, mm -hmm. right? Back in January, we were all playing Power World. Mm -hmm. And then in December, we were like, oh, no, Last of Us Factions. What? I was so excited. About so it's like, we can't pick and choose where we're at here. Listen, and, and it's not even saying, like, if you love Days Gone and you just wanted a single player thing, you're not, you know, your feelings aren't valid if you're disappointed. You can be a little disappointed yeah. by this news. But just to to poo-poo the whole thing, I think, is just a little bit over the top. That being said as well um i think they're the studio to do this the reason a the, to why is you know what you stated earlier is just like naughty dog would have to change its whole studio well bend has done a ton of changing since days gone's come out right their top leadership have left and been replaced so you know we know that they were working on a naughty dog or sorry an uncharted multiplayer game in the beginning with coinciding with a uh, naughty dog and they wanted to go do their own thing. So let them do their own thing. Let's see what they're cooking up with. And um, we'll probably see it sometime at the showcase. I think this game is a bit more far along than we think. I know Hiroki Totoki said that they cut down their live service games from 12 to 6. And that we should see them by the end of 2025, latest 2026. So I think we're going to see this game. That being said, is there a lot on the line? Absolutely. Absolutely. So I, I wish Ben nothing but success with this. I, I'm not I'm not bummed out in the slightest. I'm banking on it, Joe. I'm calling it here. If yeah. I'm right, give me all the credit in the world. Kyle Stevenson, a.k.a. Mr. K-Step, is saying this right here. It's it's not gonna come true, but just in case, they're making an All Stars Battle Royale too. <laughs> That's the live service game, and everyone upset about it when they see that it's Battle Roy All Stars Royale two or whatever it's called. Yeah. They'll 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 change their tune and they'll be like, oh, we've always been super excited. Well, dude, <laughs> like the thing that has me pumped because like if this is the 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 ideal game I would want from them, seeing that like the the open world aspect. Uh, that they talked about being in this game, you know, some of the systems in Days Gone being in their next game. Dude, I would really love like a like a uh, Left 4 Dead style game out of Bend, Ooh, yeah, where the, it is this open world. You're going from like town to town. And you're, you know, like literally building up like fortress cities to go defend them from like hordes of zombies. Like that would be or aliens, whatever we're picking. Uh, that would sound really cool to me. That's something I would want to see ben do i think that's exciting but like again i don't know anything past that that's just my my hopes and dreams i just the one thing i just hope it isn't is one of those hey uh let's go make a call of duty kill well, <laughs> you know one of Dewani those and chat says that becomes a question then destiny of fortnite's su success purely because there's no genuine competition we see new products su succeed for a few months before being replaced by the new hotness Mm. I, I think a lot of live service games are just trying to catch up to what is working. And by then they're already years late. Yeah. And I think that's what makes Helldivers so 
special and reason why this thing has caught on and has only garnered support as the months have gone on um, is because it's doing something uniquely different. It's not trying to be Fortnite. It's not Fortnite. It's not trying to be Call of Duty. It's not. It's it's very very much its own idea. And for that, like, I think that's what Ben needs to strive on because I think the one thing when when Duane says that, I think we all notice with a lot of AAA development is like, hey, what's the what's the buzzword? What is the you know what's 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 everybody what's Warzone doing? What's Fortnite doing? What, how can we make one of those instead of going, okay, so listen, we want to make a multiplayer game, but we, and, and we wanted to have these elements. How do we, how do we get that to work? And how do we not go after Fortnite? Cause we know we're going to lose that fight, not go after Warzone. What is something that is unique enough that it stands on its own? That's a really tough question. And to make that fun and engaging for not just thousands of people, but millions. That's hard. To I do. want I want more people to take um sucker punches. Uh what's the word I'm looking for? It's follow in their footsteps when it comes to like Ghost of Tsushima Legends. Okay. Because that was such a great idea for a live service multiplayer game. Yeah. That could be seen as kind of like thrown on in addition to. But if they were to given the tools and the assets to really put behind this idea and make it a full-fledged experience yeah not that it isn't because it was a great time i had such a good time playing that game but like that's a brand new cool looking live service multiplayer game and they did something brand new if more studios can follow in those footsteps and be like we have this really cool idea for it and not chase the trends and, and given the tools to actually kind of explore what that game could be and make it unique enough, I'm all for it. And it could be something where it's Legends-esque, where, like, dude, God, Ghost of Tsushima is so good. You don't even think about so Legends, good. and then you think about Legends. I, I know, like, right? Because <laughs> they're just like, listen, we know, like, the, the gameplay loop is great, and if we have little arenas where we get to move people around and just test out different parts of, mm-hmm. of Jin's kit... Like that could be a a game in itself. And I bet Sony loves that because that's probably a bit cost effective for them. Sure. Um, You know, you you get to reuse parts of the the map, animations, all of it. And at the same exact time, you know, you get people in there. Maybe they're going out there buying a cosmetic. You know, maybe they're testing it out. So, yeah, it could very much be a a DLC pack. We just don't, or add on, whatever, Mm -hmm. standalone. We just don't know what it is. And for that, it's just like, how about we just. Pump the brakes. I, cool, I, I, cool our jets, everybody. Yeah, cool the jets. Cool the jets. Again, it's fun to go, hey, what could this game be? But at the same exact time, by just throwing it away, because, you know, you, you see the buzzwords. I understand the hesitation, but let the team cook, yeah. as the kids let say. Them cook. You know? Let them cook. <laughs> I'm hip. You, I'm you hip. are so hip. I'm, I'm, I'm sw- swagooing, as the kids say. All right, Kyle, listen, I've embarrassed myself. Enough. I was going to let you keep going. That's why I stayed silent. <laughs> I'm good. Hey, Kyle, can we talk about Xbox now? <laughs> I really don't the want green to. Room? <laughs> Let's enter the green room. Can I Can I just say, I'm so tired of talking about Xbox. Let's just enter the green room. We're on PlayStation, though. I'm tired of talking about Xbox. Hey, it's a slow news week, you know? Eh, that's fair. So, I mean, a con over at PS Lifestyle writes, Xbox's pivot to multi-platform is partly due to Gen Z habits, says Phil Spencer. Oh, boy, this should be fun. Xbox boss Phil Spencer has said... That's why I put it in. That's why I put it in here. It's going to be fun. Has said that Microsoft's pivot to multi-platform and decision to release games on rival PlayStation partly stem from its research into Gen Z purchasing habits. The generation born between mid to late 1990s and early 2010s have vastly different consumption patterns from the older generations. In an interview with Polygon, Spencer highlighted the need for companies to adapt to changing markets and demographics. Quote, This notion that Xbox can only be this one device that plugs into a television isn't something we see in the Gen Z research because nothing else is like that for them, he said. Using the example mobile devices, Spencer pointed out that Gen Z purchase iPhones and Android phones depending on their preference, but have the same apps and games available on both of them. Quote, some of them will have an iPhone, some will some will have an Android, but all the games and everything is the same, Spencer said. I can still get to TikTok on both of them. All of their stuff is available wherever they want, end quote. 
Spencer concluded his thoughts by saying that Microsoft needs to change in order to maintain relevance with younger buyers. All I see, all I think about when reading this show, go on, is I'm blanking on the actor's name now that I think of it. But it's the the meme of "How you do, fellow kids?" with the skateboard. The the guy from like the the Adam Sandler yeah. movies. I, yeah. Why am I blanking on his name? He's a terrific Steve actor. Buscemi. Thank you. Yeah. How you doing, fellow kids? <laughs> what's what's going on? They're on the TikToks. They're on the apps. <laughs> Good lord. <laughs> Oh God! I just think of my college, my old college professor. God rest her soul. She's probably dead right now. If you're on your phone in class, she would yell at you. She's like, "You're on your phone. Play with your apps." <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what, what, "Okay, lady, relax." Anyway, um, rest in peace. Uh, probably. So this is really interesting because he goes off to say, hey, "I would, you'd, you'd be open minded to bringing." other storefronts onto the xbox platform which is very weird when you first think of it because you're like wait a second what the part of the console that makes you all the money is the closed ecosystem it's the closed marketplace like wouldn't that just defeat the purpose but if you're able to to make the next box xbox whatever we're going to call it compatible with X epic game store or compatible with steam then all of a sudden people that have that you know fifteen hundred dollar pc or don't and just want to play with their friends on the like you know phasmophobia something that's not on console well suddenly you can and suddenly that makes the box a little bit more appealing so i bring this up because Lang Solo writes in, that's right, that's why I put this in this podcast. Uh, Phil Spencer sees a future where Epic or other stores could hit Xbox consoles. Do you think Sony would allow these stores on PlayStation? And which stores would you like to see? Kyle, do you see a future in which you are, I mean, technically was on PS3. You could load up your Steam onto your PlayStations. On your apps. Do you see that future? No. No. I don't see Why not? It. Why not? Yeah. They they hemmed it hard over crossplay for how long? <laughs> how are they gonna allow a full a whole other store on there? This yeah, is this right. is different to like if Game Pass was on there. Uh but like to just allow another storefront that you can buy things on that client and use on your console. Where is the revenue share going? How much are the, how much of a cut are they going to get? Is it viable right. for the games on that store? Let's say Steam, right? Indie sells at ten bucks. Certain amount goes to Steam, and then what? A certain amount goes to PlayStation, and then what's left over for the indie dev? How is that going to make any of them happy? I just don't. I, mean, I don't see a world where that will work. I mean, that that is a terrific point. And I bet there is some people in the back office somewhere, at least at Microsoft, trying to make those things happen. Mm -hmm. um, strictly, I, I, I don't think this is happening at PlayStation because they don't need it to happen. Yeah, yeah. that is also true. I, I think, and I please speak on it if I'm wrong, Yeah, PlayStation games on PC, are they just on the individual like Steam and Epic Games or clients, yep. or is there a playstation pc store client that you can have on your dashboard or your no that is something you know that's something we talked about uh, a year or two back mm -hmm. uh where playstation is looking at uh some type of client on pc that they're gonna okay. try to make so i i bet i bet in a years esque time you're going to see a pc client of playstation akin to like a ubisoft connect or a battle net sure. that you have to connect to via steam and that pc players are going to hate but that is a way for them to get you into the playstation ecosystem try to sneak sure. it in um but it, yeah it, it's Go like it. it's like pc is the and i say this in the most lovingly way possible uh -oh. even though it's a gigantic stereotype so please you uh -oh. yell at me if you want i say it with all the love in my heart let's go for it pc is like the group of goth kids in your high school that are are totally on their own they're in their own worlds they love what they love and everyone is trying so hard to get them to be their friend 
Mm. Or like we all have that that one group of kids that were like wallflowers, or, or, yeah. and then you think, man, they're so cool. I would love to be part of them. This is like consoles speaking to the PC crowd. Like, hey, come join our group. We're having a great time at lunch. Come cool. on over. Hey, do you want to join my dodgeball team? We can yeah. use a couple. But more. like, it's like it's like instead of it being goth kids, it's like goth kids, but like they're glowing <laughs> the yeah. LED yeah. lights. Yeah, you know, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, no, I so I don't think they need to do this uh, because they strictly don't need to. I think PlayStation probably views that as counterproductive uh, to what their still their plan is, which is everything has to revolve around this box until the day that it isn't. Uh, that's still going to be very important for them. That being said, though, there are things that PlayStation does need, and I think they do need to steamify their storefront a little bit we see this with like they're making uh, i don't know kyle's wincing as probably Ooh. someone in the car. just hear me out just hear me <laughs> okay. out hear me out um you know wish wish lists we're seeing become more prevalent on playstation mm -hmm. uh something that playstation actively wants you to do mm -hmm. what i would like from the playstation store is a easier way to get early access games onto that storefront while and uh, here's the balancing act while making curation better so that we don't get the, you know, jumpy bird games, the easy platinum games, no disrespect, Kyle. but like we don't get those games that flood the marketplace. We get these early access games like your power worlds that you, genuine could question. Blow up. You don't yeah. think that happens on Steam? What? All, all the, all the really cruddy jumpy bird games. It happens all the time. Well, that's what I'm saying is like the PlayStation does need because that's the one big problem with Steam. We just saw it the other day with EA, right? EA just yep. re-released a bunch of games on Steam mm -hmm. and then a whole bunch of indie de uh, devs suffered because their games on the newly released just got flushed down off that page one. And that hurts visibility and that hurts profitability and that hurts them. So like that's why I'm like a curated, a better curated store. <laughs> <laughs> with you know an emphasis on wish lists with the emphasis on some early access games you can maybe start breaking down some barriers that way because the one thing that i i constantly hear from especially devs at pax east was early access early access is important because we get money now so that it helps support the game in the future and help grow that audience as we're growing the game and the audience is essentially play testing the game and you're getting their feedback they're feeling like they're being listened to because they are and they're going and telling their friends about it and so it, it's it's this like <sighs> love you jimbo this virtuous cycle that happens <laughs> and so if we could get that i think by just improving the storefront alone i think is a good way for a playstation to keep up with pc because now listen the console wars is over but the PC wars have arrived and we, <laughs> we have to think ahead of the automatrons here. Okay. All right. Because they're, we got to think of them a level on Creek because they're one step ahead of us. We gotta, we gotta do something about these led loving for me. <laughs> I, I, for one though, Joe, I have not seen like all these, you know, cheap platform platinums right. flood the PlayStation store lately. They have been doing a really good job. Yeah. Uh, the last year, I, I think, because they even said it like we need to do better. And yeah. Ever since then, you've seen them. Absolutely. Better, I so. mean, they're there yeah. if you want to search for them. They're there easily. Yeah. But I think they're on the right track. I don't want them to go full steam. Um, no, no, no. Because we don't want this like the libertarian future that they always preach about. It's like that the marketplace. No, no, I, no, 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 no. I, I also, Curation. I also Curation. don't want tons of uh, uh, nudie adult games and pop Beauty up magazine day games just because like you know i don't want my nieces to hop on and see them because yeah again they just pop up out of nowhere <laughs> oh you sure they pop up out of nowhere <laughs> i'm not saying you know i do a search here and there i'm just saying uh <laughs> fair enough listen let's remember because it's his final week let's remember bobblehead jim take it away kyle next story on the list 
Victoria Kennedy over at Eurogamer writes, PlayStation releases digital Jim Ryan bobblehead as nod to his career. <sighs> Sorry. I'm crying, Kyle. I'm crying. That's why I got the tissues out. It's just, <laughs> it's... What's wrong, Kyle? It's going to be breaking apart at the same time. I'm just it's... imagining that Jim Ryan's head just... The whole time, just bobbing around. around. We have live service games in the pipeline. That's right. Hey, virtuous cycle for the Jesus. kids. <laughs> PlayStation has released a digital Jim Ryan bobblehead to commemorate the exec's time at the company. Back in September, Ryan announced he would be retiring from Sony in March after nearly 30 years with the company. Whoa, that made me dizzy. Now, to honor the occasion, Sony has released a bobblehead collectible in the exec's likeness, which can be obtained through PlayStation Stars. If you fancy grabbing one for yourself, you will need to play through one of the games Ryan championed during his time as CEO. Your options are Gran Turismo 7, Marvel Spider-Man 2, God of War Ragnarok, The Last of Us Part 2, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, or Destiny 2. All right. Did you, okay. This is from uh, his... God, what's the one magazine he, they always go on? E, uh, G, GQ or whatever? Uh, Gentleman's Edge. Quarterly, I think, right? No, it's like it's one of those like lifestyle magazines. For oh, some GQ. Reason. Yeah, sure. Yeah, GQ. Um, where they're like, what's your favorite games? And he's, he just lists out all the easy... Gran Turismo 7. God of War, Ragnarok, fantastic experience. <laughs> it's like, dude, just say you don't. You, just you name don't all the shit. PlayStation Studio games that came out. Exactly. Totally and the one studio we regret buying, Destiny. It's like, okay, all right. Um, Kyle, it got me thinking though. Mm -hmm. With Bobblehead Jim. Yep. Um, first off, are you getting the Bobblehead? Probably not. Also, is this Last of Us Part Two remaster? Or the no, OG. that's just, I, I think either or, because it's just okay. his favorite. All right, so then I yeah, will yeah, yeah. probably get it organically, but right. nothing is going to take Shoe out of my little shelf that is on my front. Oh, the Shoe's not leaving. Shoe's always staying. Ooh. But it got me thinking about Jim Ryan's legacy. Yeah. How we are going to remember him. And I asked the audience, hey, y'all, what do you think is going to be when we look back at Jim Ryan's tenure? What are we going to remember? What are going to be his victories? What are going to be his missteps? What are going to be the memorable Jim Ryan quotes? Where, Well, Drellish came on in with, I think, probably one of the best worded questions and answers uh, for us on the show. And, of course, you can send us your questions each and every Wednesday over on the Trophy Room Discord server. I ask for them. You guys provide them. And Drellish comes in clutch saying, Jim Ryan's tenure as head of Sony Interactive Entertainment has been a mixed bag. Victories? The PlayStation 5 launch triumph. Despite a global disruption caused by COVID-19 pandemic, uh, Ryan steered highly anticipated PS5 to a successful launch in 2020. The console has been a smash hit, selling well over 50 million units in just three years, a testament to its strong appeal. Two, revitalizing Europe. Ryan also focused on strengthening PlayStation's presence in Europe. This included rebuilding Sony Liverpool Studio, which had previously shut down. His challenges, chasing the wrong money. Ryan's push towards games as a service and live service models have been met with mixed reactions. While these models are, are offer ongoing revenue streams, looking at Bungie, the Bungie narrative for me makes it clear that they haven't delivered on those expected results for PlayStation. Two, this is a big one disconnect with community there have always been concerns about ryan's engagement with the gaming community some controversial statements haven't resonated well with us fans creating the disconnect so what are your thoughts on the legacy of jim ryan leaves behind in what ways has he left some residue for hiroki totoki to clean up considering how 2024 has been going for sony so kyle what do you think about jim ryan's legacy what is it going to be what what were some of his victories? What do you think were some of the pitfalls of the man, the myth, and the bobblehead? Uh, I think Drell has knocked it out of the park. Honestly, I don't yeah. know if I have any anything else to add. Uh, I I think he does deserve a whole lot of uh, uh, credit for how he handled 
um, the PS5 release during a pandemic. I think he steered the ship correctly, and it was a huge hit. And granted, there were a ton of scalpers that would scalp things up, but for what could have been a gigantic challenge, I think he did a great job with making sure the processes were there, and and I think he he nailed it. But what overshadows that is, I think, what Jarlis put is the disconnect with us. He very much feels like the house during Halloween that you open up and instead of like, you know, the really big king size bars or the really good candy, you're getting Necco wafers and apples at Jim's house because he's so and nickels and nickels. And he's because he's so mm-hmm. out of touch. Um, It just it just feels like he's he pops on screen and yes, he is in video game world and in PlayStation world and gaming. But it's it's like he relies on other younger hit people to tell him all the cool things that are happening. Right. It, it, it's like he's just there for the position with no real love and passion for it, if that makes any sense. And I, I don't know the man. I don't know anything in between other than his poorly timed and poorly written emails. Uh, <laughs> I, I just... I, th- I think that his challenges and that disconnect, I think, will overstate anything positive that he has brought to the table during his tenure, which which is a bummer. Right. Um, I got some things to add. Yeah, I think. Listen, the highlight is the PlayStation Five launch. Um, that is, dude. How do you launch a product? First off, how you launch a worldwide product in itself is a challenge. And then amidst a time that we haven't seen in modern day. Um, and like, you know, everybody talks about, you know, the, 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 the chip shortage, the getting things off via like ship or plane. God bless you, Boeing. Like those challenges are difficult in itself. Now to do that via, you know, in the midst of a global pandemic, that's, that's huge. It can't be understated. And I think to a, a point, PS5's rarity, I, I do wonder sometimes of like what the PlayStation 5 would have been right now if it didn't happen, like sales-wise, where where would we be at with it? Because I think it would have sold well over the PS4. It was living off that hype. But there was a strong appeal for it in the sense of like, th- it's in pop culture of how hard it is to find a PS5 even where it's not anymore. Like, you could hear it on late night shows. I literally just heard it on on a TV show I was watching. Like, yeah, like, the PS5 is mainstream, and it's mainstream for its appeal and how rare it is. Like, it's it's this rare commodity. So I think that cannot be understated. That's where I'll defend Jim of, like, he may not be the best people person. He's definitely a company man that will say the things that need to be said even when he doesn't believe them or even when he doesn't know those things exist. Right. For example, when, you know, they were talking about, what was it? Cross play way back when I think it was for Fortnite, where Jim Ryan's like, let's think about the children. <laughs> and like, even Nintendo's like, no, nah, no, nah, dude, we'll do, we'll do cross play. Sure. You, our chat's on our phone. So, <laughs> you know, we pretty much don't know what we're doing. We'll take your word for it. You know, Microsoft uh, and Epic. So like, you know, that crossplay dilemma with Jim Ryan saying the wrong thing. It's wrong to us because we know the facts, but he doesn't. He's just saying what needs to be said. The company wants him to say a thing. He's going to say it. So, you know, even when it's like we believe in generations, obviously the man didn't. Um, but he's going to say what he needs to say in that moment to make sure that the product remains what it's at. So I do think that there is, for all his all of his dumb Ryanisms, that we criticize chastise, uh, but his cats love. That's one thing. The man did go to bat for this company, uh, to, to ways of like, you know, the ABK deal. He was obstructing that thing at every step and every turn, making sure at the end of the day that Sony, that PlayStation got the best deal it possibly could. And look at where it's at right now. Like, you know, we take a look at the ABK deal going, whoa, ABK actually changed Xbox. Xbox didn't change ABK at all. Jim Ryan still walks away going, and I got everything I needed. I got the assurances, and I made sure that I'm not losing this one thing that's really important to me. 
so yeah, I, I come out with but, it. I would even say also, that. Also, Joe. Yeah. Come on. Go because of all that, wasted our time here for almost a year and a half. Every week talking about ABK. Every other week, but yeah, sure. I was so sick and tired of it, Joe. <laughs> and look, we're still talking about it. But like, you know, I think there there is something to mention there. As for the company, I think he was great. For the 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 person, the day to day, he's been a disaster. Like the games and service push that he tried uh, has blown up in nothing's working. I mean, except for hell divers right now, it's been rough for him. And I probably is one of the reasons why he's leaving. Cause he's going to leave on a high and he's going to let someone else kind of pick up the pieces. The live service push was a mistake. Um, you know, I think it's great to have games like Hell Divers. Do not get me wrong there. But, you know, to see so many of the games already fail and they didn't even get to reach the consumer, that's frustrating. To know that so much of this generation is a miss because some guy wanted to chase a, a you know, chase a trend, that sucks. So there's the other side. It's like the games we missed because someone wanted to chase a trend, that pisses me off. You know, and you're right. There is this like disconnect between PlayStation and the community. But the more, <laughs> God bless, the more Xbox talks, the more I realize that may be a blessing than a curse. As we see constantly, you know, people picking apart whatever Phil says to fulfill whatever doomsday scenario that they got prepped. Um, yeah, I mean, listen, I take a look at the Xbox side right now. It's a disaster over there. Everybody's talking about the end of days. Everybody's fighting with each other. Everybody's acting like what's happening right now is going to be the end of the world for them. Rightfully so, because the communication's been all over the place. So to me, I'd rather have barely any communication than overly communic uh, communicative. That said, uh, Savoy Prime writes in. Okay, that was my TED Talk. Savoy writes, what's up, fellas? What up? How would you rank Jim Ryan era as the head of PlayStation compared to past eras? Uh, Toshoi, sorry, Toshi, Toshiyoshi Kodera, uh, my apologies, sir, and probably rest in peace. Uh, Andrew House, <laughs> hello, sir. Kaz Harai and uh, Ken Kudaragi, have a great show. So out of all those folks, Kyle, where are we ranking Jim? Where where we where do we put Jim Ryan? You got the PS1 era, PS2 era, PS3 era, PS4 era. Where does the PlayStation 5 era fit? That's a great question. Great know, question. Right? Get you thinking. Get me Avoid thinking. Prime. Um look at you. I think he's probably He's probably smack dab in the middle. Yeah. Yeah, like, also, and this is just me being tired and uh, um, cranky. not cranky at all. No? I'm very happy. No. Um, Deleted. Just forgetting exactly which one is which. <laughs> Fair enough. Because, <laughs> like, Kaz Harai, I very clearly remember the Ridge Racer and PS3 yeah. thing, which yep. was not good. Mm -mm, at mm -mm. all but i also am forgetting everything else that kaz did andrew house i think is the top of the list i love andrew yeah. house yeah. um so do you apparently the, the cease and desist um i mean is, they're still coming you know i'm still visiting his house every now and again. how dare you <laughs> <Steal his mail. laughs> i'm bringing the bit back rewind 2019 trophy very different era you know uh, yeah for sure but um, yeah, i think he's just middle of the line because i think again uh, that Getting the PS5 out during such a tumultuous time in the world, I think that that has a heavier weight to it. Mm -hmm. Here's what I say. I don't know. <laughs> it's it's weird because we put a lot of emphasis on the head of said company. To me, thirty two year old man, I had no idea who Ken Ken Kuragi was when I was eleven. Nor do I I remember him that far. I know he made the goddamn thing, but like I can't even can't tell you. I was literally 13 years old. I was going through puberty. It was a weird time for me. Um, 
and it goes to to me like it goes to my head of the weird emphasis we put on these folks ever since i could remember the end of the 360 era into the one and into the PS4 era, where you finally got to really see these guys and build these personalities with these executives towards the end of the PS3 and, and 360 era, where it's like, yeah, no, I, I know who Andrew House is. I saw him multiple times, and he, 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 he uh, you know, he talked nope. about we'll the video the past. No, no, I was going to bring up the bed. Oh, I was okay, going to bring okay. up the bed. Okay. No, lovely, lovely living, living room, though. Um, like, we know Shuhei because of the old Greg Miller interviews back in the early uh, you know, 2000s or mid uh, 2000s. So it's like, yeah. Uh, so for me, it's like, it's a weird ranking system because I wasn't self-aware until halfway through the 360 era. That being said, I do think Andrew House is hands down the best. I think he's a guy that saw a trend, was able to capitalize on that trend and really made the PlayStation Studios what we think of them now today. And I think Jim Ryan rides heavily on those coattails as to why the PS5 is so freaking great. I think Kaz Harai made a mess and he had to clean up a whole ton of it. Uh, him and actually Ken, when you think about the PS3. So it's like, I would put at the end of the day, Jim Ryan, not the persona, probably smack dab in the middle. I think he was all right. But there, you have to give it up to the PlayStation 1 era of going out there, being this ragtag bunch of misfits and challenging the great Nintendo and utterly decimating them. You know, and becoming this, you know, staple in games. So, yeah, I would I would say Jimbo, he's in the middle. And as for where PlayStation goes next, well... Maybe that's a conversation for next week's show. Ooh. Ooh I, Sean Capri in chat. Hi, Sean. It says, what dude, up, we're going to tell our grandkids about the Xbox One launch. I, for oh, one, yeah. was excited for parts of that presentation. <laughs> the TV part? <laughs> As a fantasy football fan, I loved having the idea of my lineup on the side while I'm watching live TV. Yes, yeah. I was excited for that. Call me crazy. I don't care. That was dope never happened so i don't care <laughs> <laughs> fair enough fair enough you know what was really cool the second screen experience that they tried well the, oh, the, the, i, I the, just the brought glass. that up hollow lens no uh, it was like microsoft oh, glass yeah it was glass yeah because i remember yeah. it was like wasn't the division part of it like you could have the map on the battlefield your ipad or something four yeah had it where it's like here's the battlefield you're the commander yeah mm -hmm. and you're like i'm like dude that is so yep it and i you know, I'll just say it. That's still cool. <laughs> yeah, this is still yeah. something I want. Absolutely. A video game. Hey, the Wii U was ahead of its time with that second screen, you know? 100%. Yeah. I got You ready for the flash news? Go 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 fast. Fast. You don't go so fast because you? you're sick. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> do you want me to take this so you don't have to read? I'll, I'll do the first one because I'm really excited about okay. it. Judas pre-previews are out. Uh, this right up. Are they calling this, them the pre preview? They're like, I, we don't even know what it's called. It's, <laughs> we got four hours to show you. <laughs> we got a lot to say about it. Um, this is right up. I believe is from uh, Kami Games. Uh, fantastic uh, Twitter account. Go follow him. He'll, he should be on the show soon. Uh, Bioshock in space from Ken Levine. The creator of Bioshock, of System Shock. I mean, it's the only other place Ken could go. It's in we space, went, baby. We went in the, the, the sky for Infinite. Mm -hmm. We were mm -hmm. underground in one and two. Uh, deep deep sea. Being on normal land is boring. We're, we're going That's up. Right. You know? Fuck it. We're going to the Mayflower, man. <laughs> this is a non-linear story structure. So, the basis of this game is that... And this is what he's been at for over 10 years now. Ken and the, and the team at Ghost Story. You think we're ever is getting that, that Bioshock Vita game? That he promised uh, us, you know? I don't think it's happening. Damn. I'm sorry. But if this is if this is the reason as to why, I'm okay. Okay. So this is, the, the premise is, the problem with single player games is once you beat them, you're done. We want to make a single player game that you're going to keep going back to that you're going to keep finding new stuff in, and that the story completely changes off of 
your moment to moment gameplay that the characters around you react to your actions as you're doing them okay or doing the level <laughs> who so the main character has memory loss and you're trying to pick up the pieces as to what has gone awry on this ship while also helping or fighting three of these major side characters tom played by troy baker hope which i didn't say the actress's name and neferiti neferiti they all neferiti sorry uh, the screen's all the way over here okay so the whole premise of this is you're helping it's kind of like a roguelite in a sense where you die you come back they don't want to explain what type of story elements happen when you come back um but you're trying to piece together what happened on the ship and who is the person i'm going to be helping who's the person i'm going to be hurting who's the person i have to get through and the cool thing is they're all seemingly trying to persuade you as to what side is correct in this moral quandary as you are maybe possibly the last human alive in the universe and you have to go through this story and choose what happens uh, your decisions with these characters greatly affects the narrative. Every player's experience will be different. Some roguelike elements mixed with Bioshock ballroom battles. Uh, it looks like a ton of fun. Kyle, I, when I... First, I was like, I'm only going to watch this nine-minute bit from uh, Jeff Keighley. Where he's, I'm like, I could kind of assume where this is going to go. It's Jeff. And son of a gun, he got me. I was like, this seems, this seems nuts. This seems like a game that, like, he's probably overselling it. I'm going to go to the IGN interview. That was literally an hour long. And Kyle, I was sat there enthralled the entire time. And this may be all marketing bullcrap. And I'm <laughs> buying it up. Mm -hmm. Where it's like these characters are trying to convince you as you're going through this this game as to why you should be siding with them, why you should maybe stop fighting with them, and maybe your actions, if you provoke one of them too much, they'll close certain aspects of the room off to you. Maybe, you know, there'll be more enemies in a room because you did a thing. Maybe they'll take away healing out of uh, certain areas in the room. Maybe they'll try to persuade you by saying, hey, you know what? Stop helping Hope. Come help me and I'll give you a new gun and an upgrade. And your decisions affect each run and not just each run, the game itself. So you're constantly going back and replaying this game to get a different ending. How hyped are you for this, Kyle? I Please am, tell me you're, you're as hyped as I. I am excited. Okay. I don't think I'm as hyped as you are. Um... And I can't point my finger on why. I just, I, this game's taken a long time. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Okay. It's just that games that usually take such a long time usually are trying to do, they're trying to be too ambitious. Mm -hmm. And I can't think of one thing or one example where, it all gelled together perfectly. And and, and I, tr I I love Ken. I like his right. games. Right. On paper, this is a Kyle S video game. Yeah. I just the nonlinear story structure part is kind of a hang up for me cuz I like his stories. I like I like I, think... I like being fed the stories instead of me choosing my story in this one yeah which granted i i love other roguelikes that do it it just tell me the story <laughs> instead of me choosing the things i don't know i i i, I, I get feel the hang up. because i want to i want to experience everything that i can possibly experience in the game like yeah. when i play games i go to every corner of the room and every wall and uncover every inch of the map and knowing that me siding with one character is going to block off other options yeah story wise makes me nervous that i'm not going to enjoy that first run through 
that I'm not going to go back and play it to find the other ones, or I'm just going to end up playing it the same way. I just love his commentary on, well, just in general, I just love his commentary. Sure. Um, you know, where it's like the Bioshock libertarian themes, you got like the weird evangelical themes uh, and colonial themes from Infinite. And like, I want to see what he, because he has something to say about modern society, social media, and isolation um, in this game that I want to see. I really want to hear what he has to say. The one thing that I think he said was like the hang up for him was like, the ending was different in Bioshock, whether you chose to save um, the little sisters. Sure. Or not. Yeah. And he's like, I wanted to do that on a much grander scale where like infinite, he loves infinite, but he's like, I, I felt like I was just, I was taking you through a roller coaster ride and it was a fun ride. It was mm-hmm. action packed, but I wanted to do something that is going to challenge um, his narrative process. And so that's what got me so excited. You know me, Kyle. Mm-hmm. I I take a look at any game and I'd be like, I'm as I'm I'm this excited. Like I'm excited, but I'm always le- like I'm trying to be level headed about it. Unless it's Star Wars. Unless it's Star Wars. And Dune. And the, the popcorn cup. Uh the bucket that you can fuck it. This oh, right here. And now look who's not PG. <laughs> I, I'm sick. I'm sick. I'm delirious. Uh, this right here has me. This is my most anticipated game ever. Like this is this is what I'm looking forward to. If this hits next year, mm-hmm. God, for, like this is it. This is what I'm looking forward to the sure. most. It, and as as he's talking through the interview, um, I'm just like, I need to go out there. I need to buy. I need to buy Infinite again and beat it again. I'm like, can I platinum this game? I really want to. Mm. I know I could platinum. Uh, Bioshock. I I think I did that on 360. Yeah, real like, talk. Infinite, great game. Too amazing. many people. Too many. Too many people shit on Infinite. I, and I don't know why. It's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, maybe it's because it came out in the year Last of Us did, and Last of Us was a better game. Shit, it was 2013, wasn't it? And think of this: Judas comes out during a Grand Theft Auto year, just like Infinite. <laughs> Oh wow! Think about that. Think about that for a second. Wow. Yeah. You know, okay. If it, GTA Five. Yeah. Also, Ken, why didn't you invite us? We were in Boston. We were just up there. We, we could. We could have. We could have swung by. You know. I could have bought a shirt. Look at. I bought the. Yeah. Look, I, I'm gonna bring this prop in later. I bought that. Yeah. Ghost Story Come Games. On. Hit us up. You know. Please. All right, Kyle. Let's talk about something everybody hates now. <laughs> this. You is... want to read this one? Yeah, I can read this one. This comes from uh, Cami over on Twitter. Marvel Rivals details, because that's apparently a thing. Free to play, 6v6 shooter, destructible environments, 18 confirmed heroes, Black Panther, Doctor Strange, Iron Man, Loki, Magneto, Spider-Man, and more. Robust post-launch roadmap in development for PC with a closed alpha in May with 12 heroes. Marvel Rivals. I love Overwatch. Mm-hmm. So I'll give this game a shot. Yeah. Who cares? Everybody's hating this. I was like, actually, I kind of dig like the cool like anime fusion they got with these comic book characters. I'm kind of in on this. Sure. I'm in on the concept. I'll give it a shot. I and will the never fact touch that you this have game. A... <laughs> the fact that you got character synergies and for some reason Hulk has a gamma gun. Like sure all right sure <laughs> all right cool yeah that's there you go is it coming Marvel to Rivals. playstation it just says in development for pc i put it here because i i generally thought it was coming also to ps5 ah okay yeah one day I mean, I should. Who knows? one day this is a NetEase game developers of call of duty and battlefield devs but that's just a marketing term so sure you got does working on this talented ones at that i like that they're including like magic in the roster and like yeah Groot, which is nice and again like you get to mix and match like you had like hulk like doing a beam towards iron man it was making his like <laughs> he's making his chest beam go <laughs> it's the way you said it hulk's just doing talking. a beam <laughs> he's doing a beam he's doing his... a beam <laughs> 
All right, go to the, go on to the next one. You said hold on, hold on. I wanna I wanna see what the other hero the heroes are because I thought there was another one that was uh kind of cool. You got Groot, Rocket, Iron Man, Black Panther. Um, then you have like a few others that are like uh more uh obscure. Yeah, as th- well. those are the ones got, that I thought. Yeah, was you got Peter Quill in here. Peter Low Quill. Key. You know, Spider Man's in there. Voiced by Yuri Lowenthal, by the way. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Andy that's why weird. it's not coming up. I'm putting Marvel heroes. And, uh, mm-hmm. yeah. no, you, can't, you can't do that. Dumb, dumb. You can't do that. Marvel, Marvel rivals. Marvel rivals. It's it, it, like Galactus is, an, is a sexy anime lady. Hey. Does, listen, I'm not going to yuck your yum. If you ever thought Galactus was sexy, here you go. You know? Swallow my world. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Excuse me? I you forgot got, where oh. I was right now. <laughs> I know. You got the Scarlet am, Witch. Am I, I on the here. video game Tinder panel right now? What's yeah, happening? So. You got Namor. You got uh, Dr. Strange. And Sc- then my wife. A Scarlet Storm. Witch. Yeah, Scarlet. I said, I said that. I said Did you? Scarlet I wasn't Witch. paying attention. <laughs> Uh, Storm. Can we just talk about how hot Storm is? It's Storm's always, always been. been hot. Oh my god. Holly, ha- Holly Berry as Storm opened me up in ways I just didn't think. And then you got a person riding a goat. Two goats. Cool. It's fun times, dude. This looks yeah. fun. You know, they got a lady with a sword. Don't know what she's about. Magic. Like to know. Magic. Yeah, One I think it looks cool. One of my cards in Marvel Snap. I think it looks cool. It's so cat it chances. Kyle's ready for that Stellar Blade demo. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't we all? Hey, speaking of Kyle, there is a Stellar Blade demo this Friday. We get to we take a a peek at those yams. That's sure. the demo. Yeah. All right, you pervs. I'm gonna try my best to stream don't, the game. Don't act like you're above it. <laughs> <laughs> don't you're right. act. You're right. I'm gonna be horny on main on the main stream. That is youtube.com slash at ps trophy room where i'm gonna try my best if i'm feeling better to stream stellar blades demo really excited dude this looks yeah. like a fun time looks like a good dmc gom and i'm all about it that said hey kyle here's a here's a hot take from Dewani Raksha. you ready for this Ooh, I'm ready. the playstation plus monthly games are here for april immortals of avium yeah Minecraft legends yeah all the hero. Would you like to read Dewani's question for us, sir? Dewani Raksha writes in, pod question. You are both generally positive fellas, but I've just seen the PS Plus games for April, and I have to know, is this the worst month in history, or is is it just that because we've been eating so well as of late that these see, that these seem so bad? Kyle, I'm a positive boy. Even when I'm sick, I'm positive. Sure. I think this is a great list of games i don't think it's that bad i think this is a good list i think duane i think listen peek your head outside look at it it's sunny it's shiny it's it's all for you i'm trying to look at what was this month's games because i genuinely forgot but like i know this month's was genuinely good i mean the catalog holy crap you got marvel midnight suns like let's stop right there it's it's a good week i mean sorry it's a good month um but even here it looks like a solid month of games, man. Yeah. Immortals like came out. Listen, did it do well? No, that's why it's on this list. Mm. But it's less than a years old. Minecraft I, Legends gonna be a year. Yep. Like, Skull are, is uh, a, a few years old at this point. I've seen it around a whole bunch. I believe it's probably on my wish list. But it is a action packed roguelite two D platformer. Yeah, give it to me. I love that there's an indie a part of this, and it, it's one that I think deserves some more love from everything that I've heard of it. It's overwhelmingly positive on Steam when it comes to reviews, so I think it's a good time. I, I it's okay to have a quote unquote downer month every once in a while. I mean, Minecraft's oh my god, the hiccups out of nowhere. I- yeah. Like Minecraft is huge. It's going to be a big get for a lot of people who maybe passed on it because initially that game I don't think reviewed all that well. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, it's just part of the service. You just get these yeah. games. Honestly, like last month. Look, first off, I think we've been on a roll. But last month we had Sifu, phenomenal. Yep. Witch Queen, 
great expansion from what I hear. Hello, neighbor two, which I heard Honestly, mixed things on. Months seem pretty similar. Yeah, and F one twenty three. We had four games last month. Yeah, we have four games. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. So I, you know, all in all, I think yeah, this is a good month. It's all. Yeah. Hi, right, Colin. What's the next thing out of Flash News? I'm dying. Introducing community game help. Upcoming PS5 update adds new enhancements for game help powered by user generated content. You can view hints from other players, share your own gameplay clips, opt in, opt out anytime, and it's coming this year. That's right, Nisa. Immortals of Avium is going to be your PS Plus game for yeah. this upcoming month. Go play it. It's a solid game. Yeah. That said, this right here this is awesome. Cool. This is really cool. Um, I wonder if it'll share like your name. That would be that would suck. But if it's just like, you hey, mean that would suck if they don't. No, if they do. Why? Privacy, dude. I want Mister Bad Bit. Yeah, I helped find. You know, I don't. I don't want to be the game help for the one near trophy. You know, we're all thinking the upskirt <laughs> trophy. Okay. Is that a real trophy? That's a real trophy. You look up their oh. skirt. You gotta. You pop not a trophy. Know I, that. I don't want to be known as that degenerate. Are you kidding me? I, I, but I do think this is cool. Where th- this is something that when they first announced or showed off this game help feature, that I was hoping it would go. Because yeah, you could if some games actually do it, which in reality is a small amount of of the devs that actually record gameplay for the help for these trophy hints or, or, or actually put the time in to make this happen, to have it be yeah. other players gameplay clips of them performing all these trophies and these hard little combos or, or walkthroughs or whatever, and just have them there instead of going to your phone and hopping on YouTube or like, I love this idea a whole lot. Yeah, because it, 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 that's, that's what happens. Uh, that's what happens to me, if, if I could speak um, <laughs> correctly, uh, every time where it's like, oh, I'm stuck on how to do something in Dragon's Dogma. I'm looking up a YouTube guide yeah. where, yeah, I could just easily look at one of the cards. And I like that this is a way for PlayStation to, A, get your eyes off that second screen into the game focus and something that they're not just giving up on, that they're actually going, no, there's something here we're going to explore more deep on so although i yeah. please playstation developers yeah. out there i beg of you if you have a trophy that has due set amount of things please let the tracker actually work and update in real time it's oh, such a rare occasion where it's yeah. like uh of spider-man 2 for example uh like collecting the the uh spider bots Having that actually update in real time as you collect them is fantastic. Whereas, like, other... And now that I'm thinking, maybe it didn't. But there are games that do that where it actually updates depending on what you do in-game. And you click on the trophy and it shows you. Most other games don't. And that's such a bummer because that's the promise of the system. Yeah. And I want them to keep actually using it the way it's intended. Fair. Fair enough. Hey, Kyle. I got a question for you. What do you want from my life? <laughs> it's what you've been playing, Kyle. Mm-hmm. Talk to me. Talk to me here. Because, you know, I've went long in the tooth about Judas. I want you to sing Judas! the praises of, uh, of MLB The Shah. Sure. So, uh, I, I forget, because it's been two weeks. Really quickly, when it comes to Rebirth, I'm chapter 10. Okay. I'm in Cosmo Switch Canyon, finally. Um, hopefully, we'll, after we're done tonight, maybe hop on and play a little bit of that before I have to go back to work tomorrow. Oh, no. Um, I'm going to be the show. 24. Vlad- Vladimir Guerrero Jr. on the cover. Sony San Diego. I thought you say Putin. <laughs> no, 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 no. Banger oh. after banger. And this year is no different. I think the gameplay is the best it's ever been. I love the fact that they changed the Diamond Dynasty mode to a quote unquote power creep model where what is that? last year um all the cards you would get like in programs whatever are automatically a 99 overall which is the highest it can be 
And so it didn't really didn't feel like you were upgrading your team throughout the whole year. You're just getting God level cards to use in your lineup. And it didn't feel fun and exciting and fresh this year. They're segmenting their seasons into chapters and each chapter will then go up a little tick before the last chapter of that season being okay. Now you're getting 99 cards, but then the new new season starts and then it reverts back to a power creep kind of thing, which I love because everyone doesn't have overpowered cards unless you spend thousands of pound, thousands of dollars to unlock the really big cards right off the gate, uh, which is dumb and you shouldn't do that. <laughs> um, yeah. and, and, and the cards are fun. Gameplay is great. They made grinding less grindy. Um, it's okay. very quick and fast to get all these programs done, which is fantastic. They're giving out free packs every single week or free cards nice. all the time, which is nice. Um, it's great. I Honestly, my only downside to it, I wish the trophy list was harder. Because oh, okay. I, I did it in four hours. Um, oh, wow. Not the first in the world because it came late. So I, I couldn't, I'm still, in, I'm still 47th or something. Um, Leave it to episode 369 of you coming late. This is the first for everything, I guess. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> no, no, I apologize for that joke. <laughs> but I, I mean, honestly, I think the Charvillus is too simplistic. Okay. Um, but other than that, I just, I'm excited to lose hundreds of hours again to this game. I actually feel good this year. Like now, in years past, I feel like I'm serviceable. Yeah. Now that I'm in it, I feel like I can take on anybody okay. because of the way the team is set and because everyone's kind of like an even level playing field. Mm. Where like I'm not gonna run into somebody who has all the best cards because they have tons of money. Like it's it's all kind of like relative. Right. It, it feels good. Okay. Yeah, I no, I like that chapter idea because yeah, then someone can't just buy their way to exactly making a god tier A rod. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. and then like you're you're facing those jabronis for the whole year, the, right? Instead, yeah. you got them for like a month. The or two. only cool. other downside would be is the daily cap on XP is kind of low. Okay. So once you hit that, you're like, oh well, I guess I'm done for the day. Yeah. Which I guess is nice, but still, when the game's so good, you want to keep playing and be rewarded for it. But yeah. it's great. So in San Diego, San Diego you're amazing. San Diego. San Diego. Kyle, <laughs> oh, I've been playing this little, uh, this little sorry. Play, still playing Dragon's Dogma. Just got back into it since uh -huh. PAX because I've been dead sick. Um, I've been seeing everybody roll these awesome, like, uh mage or not mage sorcerer and um oh god the, the one with the dual blades and uh, i was like man i really i'm like i'm I'm this lame little ranger with the bow and arrow i'm good at it but i want to i want to do something else so like instead of doing the classic warrior and ranger combo that i used to do i just got the sorcerer so i am ready to mess some folks up it looks like a ton of fun knowing me i'm gonna get molly whopped pretty pretty bad <laughs> that said I'll get more in-depth thoughts on Dragon's Dogma uh, next week. As I was at PAX, yeah, I got through all the stuff I wanted to get through in the first hour. Okay. That was Path of the Exile 2. Ooh. Kyle, this game's on your Fantasy Critic League. They yeah. aim for this to be in early access-ish in June. Mm -hmm. If you don't know what Path of Exile is, these are former Diablo devs that wanted to make a Diablo game when they didn't want to, Blizzard didn't want to make another Diablo game. This the first game, if I'm not mistaken, is free to play. It's a ton of fun. Um, Path of the Exile Two. We already have a really good. First off, Diablo Four is a great game. So when I say, from what I played, that 30 minute chunk, Path of the Exile Two looks more brutal. Um, it looks cleaner and the animations in this game are crazy. Mm. If you love Diablo, take a look at Path of the Exile 2 because this thing is shaping up so far very, again, very 30 minutes playing. This looks very promising. 
the, I just entered like you know I typed in like the skill tree. I was playing on keyboard. I don't know. Math and keyboard is gross. Sure. It's gross. <laughs> but they got controller support coming. Uh dude, the trees are intensive. Like this is for the RPG fanatic. So I'm really excited to see more of Path of the Exile 2. As for what I saw so far, really impressed me. That might be my game of show in in, in total honesty. I played a Ooh. wizard and because I'm I suck at the mouse and keyboard stuff, I click <laughs> I kept on clicking into the bad guys, <laughs> like walking up towards them. Like this is all, this is this is not going to work well for me. But like you have a dodge mechanic as well. You can move with the waz uh, movement. Um, so it's yeah, it it feels really good. It feels okay. really nice. Second game I played, Kyle. Yeah, Final Fantasy fourteen online. I saw. I think uh, Hida um, was just like, when are you going to play? Kyle, the guy rolled me as a bard, mm -hmm. I think. Okay. It's been like, I played Final Fantasy Online for like 15 minutes back in the day. I fought Ifrit. Let me tell you, Kyle. Mm -hmm. I'm, this is dangerous. This game is dangerous. Because <laughs> they gave me a starter pack. And they're like, here, you can play all this, all, all the stuff until level 70 for free. I was like, hold up. Can I get all these platinums? And they're like, you may. You you could certainly try. Oh. I don't know. I might be a Final Fantasy boy. Oh, no. Who knows? <laughs> um, but that was a ton of fun. I genuinely i am interested in Dawn Trail now. Cool. I'm a sicko. I might become a... I'm, I'm slowly turning into a Final Fantasy boy. Yay. So, you know, give it up for that. Play this little game called Animal Well. Ooh, Coming oh. to PlayStation 5. Oh, Animal. yeah. Um, I wonder. Who told you about that game before? Some stranger. I don't know. <sighs> you know. Must be This is a really... Is. Whoever they are, yeah. yeah. Um, don't want to see. It was you. This game's really cool. This it's is like awesome. a... It's like a Metroidvania, but like... It's all about exploration. It's all about finding the nooks and crannies in the map and progressing onward. Um... Nothing I can say will do this game justice. Go take a look at some of the gameplay previews. It's really clever. Mm -hmm. Like, I was just wandering along this world, and I was just like, I got to this little hidden nook where I could, like, get these firecrackers so I could, you know, throw them down this well. I could uh, blow up this chest. This chest is going to give me a lever that I could open the door to, like, all this stuff. Um, it was those little eureka moments that kept me intrigued this game is hella smart and i just i want i think it's a solo dev working on animal well as well it's a very small team yeah very small team. billy i think started it a long time ago yeah uh we need to have them on the show absolutely just even the way that they use the dual sense mm -hmm. correctly like the haptic feedback Ooh, we special game yeah, very it's very impressive. it doesn't hold your hands it's very much just like Go figure it out. And it's it's kind of easy to understand. It is so gorgeous. I love watching this game in motion with the colors and the lighting. And oh, my God. It, it We actually at 6-1 gave it one of our best of shows at PAX East because yeah. it is. It's been a long time coming. We played it last year. We didn't get to play it this year. But so many people we ran into loved it so much and we didn't have awards last year so we wanted to retroactively give them one because we would like to do that next year oh yes absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. what do we do give them little trophies terry the trophy we give them a little smiley face yeah we can figure it out we can okay. figure it out um uh, yeah animal terry? world special may 9th playstation yeah. um Please, like Joe said, please go look up some gameplay to to see it in motion because us just talking about it doesn't really do it justice. And, and yeah. uh, sh shout out to how the demo ends. I love how their demo ends. Yeah, the screen just slowly fades to black from the I outside in. To get there. You didn't finish the time demo. No, well, after real... fifteen minutes, it shuts off. Yeah, no, I was just like, I'm dumb. And they're like, yeah, we know. And like, okay, oh, and you, oh, so basically when the timer is up and it's time for you to, to move on, the screen just slowly fades to black from the outside in. So, like, you can't see anything, and then it finally closes and goes, Oh, thanks for playing. Yeah. yeah. It's like, oh, my God, yes, I love that so much. 
It's great. And uh, then shout out to Lucid. Um, this game, Kyle, yeah! right up your alley. And uh, when I say it, I think a lot of fans are gonna like clap with glee. They're gonna sh- jump in the air, clap their heroes together because it's it's like if Celeste and Mega Man had a child. Yep. And boy, oh boy, if that doesn't sell you, I don't know what will. This game is so much fun. You have like the Celeste style of traversal where you have to hit, you know, those little shiny like diamonds in the air to keep your to mm-hmm. keep your air. You have these little hidden paths that you could go through or unlock. Um, it's just it is straight up Mega Man meets Metroid meets Celeste traversal. Mm-hmm. It is so damn good lucid um, was the very first game we ever showed as part of a 6-1 indie showcase wow. the very first one uh, back in 2022 um also got one of our best in sh- best of show was at pax because man what eric is cooking up over there for lucid is so good and i'm so happy people are are, are gelling with it and loving it because and it's good y'all <laughs> Yeah, and I, I came in on a Saturday. There was, like, two people online. I'm like, is this a hidden gem? I think I'm pretty sure this is the definition of a hidden gem. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then enter the Chronosphere, I believe okay. it's called. Um, it is a uh, turn-based bullet hell uh, akin to, um, oh, my God, Bloodroots. You remember Ooh, Bloodroots? I love Bloodroots, yeah. But just think of it like uh, like... When you take a turn, they take a turn. You take a turn, they take a turn. They also wanted to say it's like uh, super hot in a way super of where like your action hot. and then it's their action and then it's your action, their action. Uh, top down pastel colors. This game also really gorgeous. Um, a heck of a lot of fun. So mm-hmm. yeah. And it's a roguelite as well. So you Sweet. get to choose different characters. I only picked one, but it was a fun time and I got a tote bag. Ooh. You know? So, and a sticker. Nice. He's very adamant about that sticker. <laughs> yeah. That's what you, we've been playing. That's been PAX East. And I oh, hold on. Can I talk about what shot. I played at PAX East? Oh, yeah, sure thing. Uh, played our closer of the, sh- the Six One Showcase, Forge of the Fae, Retro RBG. Nice. Looks like Chrono Trigger. Um, played phenomenally. This is what I played during Media Hour. And I got there at 9, 10, 9, 15. Uh, I didn't get over done until like 10 30, 10 40. It was a long demo and I kept waiting for them to be like, Hey, your time's up. But they just <laughs> kept me going. It's difficult in the best ways. The adrenaline system was super cool and fun and it's it sounds beautiful. It looks beautiful. It's right up my alley. So if you like old school RPGs, give Forge of the Fae a look and uh, be on the lookout What's, for it. Where's that coming out? Uh, right now i think it might only just be steam i think it's okay. still very early on it's the team's first game i think oh wow um also played i'm gonna get this name wrong because the name's kind of long i believe it's called obsolete souls zero episode zero something 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 um oh, this game looks really nice uh absolute 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 zero is an rpg from this team but this episode is a old school side scroller beat em up um oh, okay. and with fast and fluid combo system like a devil may cry where you do you have to be very good at what you're doing in this game i was not i got my ass kicked the whole demo but i made it through um what i really really love about it is this game is a way to celebrate haitian culture um and, and oh, the cool. devs are, are haitian american and they wanted to make sure that their culture was represented in their games and it's awesome it, it's like you know pixel art music is great yeah, what is this what, what's it called okay again? i'm gonna try again it's just the first the first two obsolete souls o b oh god s o l o t e and then souls okay. and then it's episode zero i think um but yeah, very fun, fast. The devs are awesome. Um, and then the last game I played, which was my personal game of the show, was um, oh my god, Legends of Starcadia. There it is. Uh, Ooh, if you ever heard okay. of the game called Ember Knights, Little Flame Boy, it's like a roguelite. It's yes. their new, brand new game. They announced it last on Tuesday of last week before PAX. 
uh, and the way they pitched it to me, I was just walking around trying to see if there was an open station for me to play something real quick. And he was like, Hey, do you like super Mario RPG combat mechanics? Yes, I do, sir. <laughs> then he goes, what have I told you? This game is our love child of the Goonies meets Guardians of the Galaxy. I go, I'm so in. Give me the controller right now. And it's basically that. It is fun. It is charming. Mm. It's colorful. The Super Mario combat where you have to be um, in it at all times and, and do the Sea of Star things, Sea of Stars thing where – you have to press the right button input to do an extra attack or to do more healing damage or more magic damage. Um, it just oozes with charm. And I had such a great time with it. I don't know if there's any like systems announced for it yet, um, but it's real good. So Legends of Starcadia, that's with a K, S-T-A-R-K-A-D-I-A, if you want to check that one out. Um, and I finally got Joe to play Crystalla. Yeah. Which is cool. That was, That's dude, coming to that PlayStation. That's a Souls yeah. game with plays a cat. Yeah. A no cat. fall damage because you're a cat. They land on their feet. It's great. Yeah. 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 I have a lot of fun with that one too. I was very surprised by how much fun I had with that. <laughs> All right, Kyle. Are you holding on to anything? Not think about it. Calculator. There we go. I am holding on to the ibuprofen because I am falling apart right the, now. <laughs> the one thing I bought at PAX is upstairs it, my luggage it. still. Oh, actually, I I have, I'm sorry for the crunchies, uh, audio listeners, I got the Baldur's Gate hat that I bought, because I, I went to buy, uh, play the Div- uh, the Divinity uh, Original Sins board game. That mm-hmm. was actually a ton of fun. Sweet. If I had four other nerds with me, I would I would be playing that locally. Like I would have picked that up, too, in a heartbeat. Mm-hmm. That was a ton of fun. But I got the Baldur's Gate 3, a little uh, cap here. I got Just chuck it. It's in the plastic. It's I fine. Know. Got a Baldur's Gate three shirt, dope. And then I got I dropped another thing. I got the Baldur's Gate three Alkin and the Wolf t shirt. And I'm not even done there, Kyle. Look what I got. Oh, what's got that? Got a Baldur's Gate three lanyard. Whoa. Game of the year, baby. Best represent, you know? Hey, also, really quickly, back to Flash News. Gotta go fast, gotta go fast. Shout out to Larian. Don't make DLC for Baldur's Gate. Yeah. You're fine. Don't do Baldur's Gate 4. Do your do whatever's next. I trust you. (laughs) Do whatever you want to do. I love that they're just like is all encompassing. It is a full package. It needs nothing to add on. There's so much to do in that game that even I missed. Like Shout out to y'all. You deserve to do whatever you want to do next. Yeah. And I mean, listen, I bet that license was expensive as all hell. Sure. So, I mean, Baldur's Gate 3, I know they said it's not because of, you know, Hasbro in the slightest, but I bet they're just like, hey, listen, this was the hit that we needed. Mm-hmm. This is the hit that that's really put us on the map. Now we can go out there and make something wholly different. Akin to, and it may not be the best example, but like what CD Projekt Red had with The Witcher, and then they're like, now we're making cyberpunk. Yeah, this is going to be something of our of our for the most part our own design. Oh, man, so I, I hope they have that. with sci-fi, like a sci-fi RPG. Oh, come on, Ooh. and they're like no Dungeons and Dragons elements. This is our own thing. Okay, and it, what I loved about it is they were literally saying they were making DLC for this game, and the team wasn't in on it. Like so, cool. they're just like okay, the team didn't want to do it, so we're not going to do it. I, I love that they are constantly bucking the trend i i love this because i saw a few you know the youtubers back when like Baldur's gate was really hit and they're like xbox needs to buy this studio and they've been so anti that mm-hmm. they're like no we are larian studios we are not a subsidiary of jack shit we are so anti whatever is going on right now in this industry we're not doing things for you know a ticker to go up we are making games because we are game creators Mm -hmm. like those are the people we need to be focusing and supporting those people that are taking those risks and saying no you know there's no guy in a suit here telling us what to do we want to make this thing so we're making it larian studios you have my money 110 percent of the time agreed that's why when I walked up, I was like, I'm about to make someone very rich. And the guy <laughs> laughs. He's like, not me. I'm like, not me either, bud. 
All right, Kyle, are you holding on to something? My calculator. Cool. I'm going to try to read this and not sneeze. Prepare the drop. Here are the latest steals and deals coming to the PlayStation storefront. Ancient Weapon Holly on PS4. Uh-oh. Contraptions Collection on PS5 and PS4. On March 26th, Bulwark Falconeer Chronicles. This is a uh, like a Sims-like game in the Falconeer uh, franchise, which is cool. Grandia HD Remaster yeah. on PS4. Planet Zoo from the franchise We Bought a Zoo. <laughs> Play as... What's his name? Uh, oh my Matt God, Matt Damon. 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 <laughs> he bought those kids a zoo. Now you gotta organize it. I saw a very funny skit, I think, on TikTok. I forgot what What's sketch that? show it was, it was from. But they were in couples counseling. It's just a couple of couples counseling. And they were trying to divvy up who gets what. Yeah. And like the lady goes... Right, I'm taking the gorillas because remember, you decided you wanted to buy a zoo, and I'm taking <laughs> them all. You can have the giraffes. <laughs> oh God, I just love it. it's like it's your dream, Dad. That meme, I love it so much. Yeah. Uh, South Park Snow Day on PS5 and PS4 on uh, March 20. Really quickly, yeah. did you see what happened to the South Park Digital Deluxe game on Xbox Store? No. I I think it got fixed very quickly. Uh, it was a dollar. No. So what? <laughs> so what happened is, and this TikTok could be fake. It's so it's fine. I thought it was funny. When you click in on it to to buy it, it included hundreds of digital expansion and my like tiny little DLC things. For every single game on the Xbox store, not just Snow ah. South Park. <laughs> so somebody forgot to check off a couple boxes, I guess. That's excellent. That's awesome. Uh, March 27th, Sunny Cafe on PS5, PS4. Terra Moria on PS5. Uh, about to sneeze. Nope, I got it. March 28th. I'm really breaking down now. It's really starting to hit Would me. you like me to take Area. over? No, I feel I got this now that. Nope. Yeah, you take over. About to <laughs> Ario, PS5. Felix the Cat on PS5, PS4. Fortress S on PS5. Mars 2120 on PS4. Open Roads on PS5, PS4. That was the, uh, f- I, I think it's former Full Fulbright devs. It was the Steve Gaynor game. Now Steve Gaynor's no longer attached to it, thank God. And it's with Kerry Russell and I forgot the other actress's name. But it's a road trip game. It looks It looks cool. Uh, this is surprising. Didn't know this was happening. Ocho, PS5, PS4. If you like Hotline That's Miami, if you like Hotline Miami, this is up your alley. Uh, this looks cool. This came out on PS- PC, I think, last year. Uh, I'm excited to finally play it on PS5. It's going to be a good time. Uh, Prim- Priminus R on PS4. Radurgy 2, PS5, PS4. And Stasis Bone Totem, PS5, oh. PS4. March 29th, Rich Man 11, PS5, PS4. I wonder how the other 10 Rich Men are doing. On March 31st, Death Relives on PS4. Gory, Cuddly Carnage on PS5. Oh, I've heard of that game. I think it's the Gory the Cat, I think it is. Uh, Hero.exe, PS5, PS4. Pac-Man Mega Tunnel Battle Chomp Champs, PS4. (laughs) And Rugrats Adventures in Gameland, PS5, PS4. That was at PAX at the Limited Run booth. Could be a good time. Ooh, we. A whole lot of games. A whole lot of games. A whole lot of games. Not that said, time. we got a couple of questions at the Sony Pony Express. Yee! Yeehaw! Let's go, let's go, cowboy. I'm really dying right now. Uh, I'm going to say it right here, right now, Joe. Yeah. Don't worry about post show, everybody. Joe needs the rest. <laughs> I'm turning pale, I think, right? <laughs> so don't worry about it. Next week, I'll go we got sleep. you. I'll uh, go sleep. <laughs> Ghetto Berry writes, Hey, guys. Hope you're both well and rested after your weekend at PAX East. We're getting there. It sounds like you're both going through it this week, going by Twitter. Uh, so it feels like it's up to us, the community's duty, to cheer you both up. A few weeks ago, there was a... How oh, I have heard about this. A few weeks ago, there was a Willy Wonka exhibit held in Scotland. It was an event that celebrated the recent release of the new Willy Wonka film that went viral because of how poor it was. Thanks sparsely, sparsely decorated plastic props and kids being limited to one jelly bean and a quart cup of lemonade. Tickets were brought up for 35... Uh, oh my god. 
I always do this. Pounds. Pounds. Thanks to a promising AI-heavy flyer aiming to deliver an immersive journey. A journey that was actually five minutes long and a day cut short when angry families called the cops. So my question this week is, instead of Willy Wonka, it was PlayStation who held the exhibition. So what do you guys expect to see? Remember, it has to be shit. I'm talking a bald actor playing as Joel, walking around with Nerf guns. I'm talking having the PlayStation symbols, but back to front in wrong colors. I'm talking Spooderman instead of Spider-Man. So guys, have fun with that. We'd love to hear you hear your take on the reimagined exhibition. And as always, take care and love to both. First of all, Joe, have you seen this? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's amazing. I the love unknown. it so much. It's <laughs> great. Who are we? <laughs> uh, so who's gonna be the crackhead Oompa Loompa? <laughs> That's like my first question. It's Nack. <laughs> <It's... laughs> and it's just some guy who taped and glued like uh, the ABC wooden blocks all over his body. <laughs> I was thinking too. <laughs> or little tiny like traffic cones that's just yep. all over. Uh, I was thinking because I'm also thinking how AI would screw this up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so. <laughs> Oh God! Aloy's gonna be there. Okay, but AI thinks it's alloy, like alloy. the metal, <laughs> and it's just gonna be some actress walking around with tin foil wrapped around her, spray painted, exactly like silver. Metal Mario. <laughs> and you know, so it's a bow and arrow. Yeah, it just looks like straight up metal. Yeah. What? What? Are, okay, but like, what are we leading them through? Because when you see the the Willy Wonka event, guys, really look it up. Also, the Everything guy about who, it is who a... did this also sure. has like twelve AI written novels on Amazon as well. Like this oh, is my. what he does. And I yeah. remember seeing something where he was like, "Oh my god, this event ruined me. I could never work again." You haven't worked in forever with all your AI garbage. Get out <laughs> no, of here. You haven't. No, um, you haven't. What else? What else? What else? What are we doing here? It's like the, um, oh my God. It's like the Michael commercial. Like, here's right. the Michael. You're just in a bar hanging out. <laughs> You're just yes. you know, hanging out with other characters. and. But you get like a, just like a half a cup of like lukewarm water. You yeah. Know? Kratos is full dad bod. He's yeah. got a bad back. Uh, He's in a lazy yeah. boy. He's snoring with a Miller light next to him. <laughs> Yep. Uh, Ratchet is just a guy holding, like, it's just a child with, like, a, you know, Texas Instruments calculator on his chest. With a giant wrench. <laughs> yep. Uh, yep. With yep. a little Lego minifig taped to his back that spray painted well, uh, like Clank. There you go. Oh, I was thinking Clank. That was sick. Um, what else? What else? Who's, who's going to be there? Um, <laughs> Cloud is there. But he's a literal rain cloud. <laughs> it's the AI. I love this. I'm trying to think of one for like Ellie, but I can't yeah. think of anything. Ellie, I think is you can't fudge that up. Who's gonna be the unknown? Is the unknown just gonna be there? Could if you be. guys don't know, the unknown was the <laughs> villain of this Willy Wonka. Yep, the <laughs> well-known Wonka villain, the unknown. The unknown. Um. Can we just yeah? Let's just let them have a reappearance. Yeah, I'll let that be. It could be the the polygon guy from uh, Battle Royale, mm-hmm. but yeah, he's just in a cardboard box. Mm-hmm. I like that. What else? What else are we gonna have here? Let's see. I got one more. In me. Oh, another it's, thing. Uh, oh my god! It's it's Deacon from Days Gone. Uh, yeah. Still a biker. Still a biker. That's just a random, just got. a random biker guy. No, but it, like he's on a tricycle. He's on a kid's trike, <laughs> kind of like shining down the hallway. Yeah. But it's Deacon yeah. with his motorcycle vest on, <laughs> just yelling at Boozer the whole time. We got a, a bloodboard hunter. He's just a guy in a duster. Oh, absolutely, and he's yeah. his coat. He's all pink. He, he doesn't belong. <laughs> like he's in Yarnum. He's yep. bright and colorful. We do have Parappas there, but he's just a cut, cardboard cutout. Absolutely. And it's a black and white. Yeah. Yeah. I'm liking this. I like this a whole lot. I would pay we money to this. go this, you know? Yeah. Maybe this is I the new PSX. Well, well, that's what we're calling it. Yeah. PSX the new is PSX. Back. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and you're going through 
there's like a water, like, you know, like a, what's that? Not a water slide. Remember those things you, you get to slide on? You put water on it? Back in the 90s, you slide, slip and slide. Oh, those things. Got it. Yeah. Random slip and slides. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Because of Ape Escape. Yep. Uh, you have like a, a mini golf course, but it's, <laughs> you, you have half a club, you know? I was just thinking for the Gran Turismo booth, yeah. instead of an exotic oh, car, God. it's just an Astro van. <laughs> it's a beat-up beat station wagon. It's <sighs> it's fine. The thing is, there's something like that uh, in Teterboro, New Jersey. There's like a, 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 like a dinosaur park. Oh, hell and it yeah. Is, no, 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 no. It's literally all paper mache shitty dinosaurs we took the guys there and it was the worst oh damn so like that's what i kind of feel like it's like you're seeing tripwire you know what i mean like you're seeing random cables hooked up to nothing (laughs) like it's garbage you you've been to manhattan times square right i have for people who have it uh you might think times square you know new year's eve naked cowboy if you're old like me and watch trl and he'd always be out there you think always giant billboards but for if you ever walk through <laughs> what's there joe dozens of dozens. not fully licensed characters in yep. awful furry suits yeah i you just imagine barp i imagine those to being the, the spider man there you got miles yep. you got peter you got some big guy in a, a in a venom costume but his belly is mm-hmm. hanging out like the shirt's 100%. too small yep there's an old korean woman there trying to sell you on this weird cult like christianity thing that they got yeah they're like the son of god is this old korean mm-hmm. woman she's handing you cards and beads yep and her name's abby yeah. from the last of us part two <laughs> Bam. <laughs> yeah <laughs> they're the they're the uh oh my god no, she's marlene from the fire they're the seraphates <laughs> oh yeah they're, they're uh... We just took the random Korean woman in, in Times Square. We just plopped her here. Yeah, this works. Link no, is there works. for some reason. <laughs> the most doped up Mario and Luigi are there. And they're only there to pop out of a garbage can thinking it's a warp pipe for the yep. entire show. That's all they do is they just pop up and go, this is where I parked my car. And then they go down and then they pop yep. back up. For we got a guy hours. that looks like Norman Reedus, kind of from afar. Oh <laughs> Come on, man. All right. Get All right. Your Let's own get BBs? to the last question. When you walk What's in, that? you get your own BB to carry oh, yeah. around with you the whole time? It's an actual child. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was great. Thank you, Ghetto Barry. That was Thank fantastic. You. Thank you. Our last question from the Sony Pony Express. Yeehaw. Is, comes from Yuna. Hey guys, hope you're both doing well. So my question this week is, when did a patch come out before you started playing that you felt like waiting was a good idea? This week, Trails into Reverie and Star Ocean the Second R both got patches this week that made it worth waiting a bit before I start them at some point. And also with FF7 Rebirth getting a, a performance patch last week, it makes me safe getting it now that performance has been updated from what they wanted so i throw the ball to you guys what is the game patch that made it feel like waiting was a good option cyberpunk i was gonna say say it with me point oh <laughs> yeah even i haven't gone back but i was waiting for that patch um even like phantom liberty dlc patches which is the last major patch um oh yeah mm-hmm. yeah yeah yeah. that that made it from a game that was unplayable when i played it um at launch to one of the greatest games I've ever played. Mm -hmm. Um, Cyberpunk 2077 is not the same game that it was when it launched. That's for sure. And those patches made it possible. Um, It's a phenomenal game. Go out there, play it. It's well worth it now. And even I was listening to their PAX East talk with Blessing. Um, of their, he's, he asked a question. I was like, so if you could go back, where would you go? They they all just like looked at each other and laughed. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> like They're like, well, we would change that launch. <laughs> um, definitely Cyberpunk. Yeah. yeah. That is hands down. Yep. Yeah. I have yeah. no other answer than that one. That's a good one. Fair enough. What, Fair did, enough. Well, Star, what did the Star Ocean patches do? No I got one, but I got to look that up. Yeah. 
Well, as you're looking it up, is there anything you'd like to spotlight before you get on out of here, sir? Uh, first and foremost, thanks to everyone who gave uh, me some positive vibes today as Owen underwent surgery. Oh, um, shit. He's home. He's, he's, okay. he's home. He's recovering. He got his tonsils and adenoids out as well as oh, new good. tubes in his ear all at one time. Um, just another person in the family who has way too big tonsils like me. So he's, he's right. following in my footsteps, except I still have them. Um, <laughs> uh, so thank you very much. That means the absolute world to me. Um, and thanks to everyone who watched the six one indie showcase last week. Um, I know Mike tweeted it out because I've very much been off my phone since I got home just to kind of detox from everything. But I believe we've we have fourteen thousand views on it, which is nuts. Holy that, crap. That good, is more than guys. all the other showcases combined. Um so yeah, I'm blown away by the support. Uh it just makes us want to keep going bigger and better for the next one in August as well as the Indie Game Awards that we're trying to plan and get together. Um, I just, I'm very grateful and thankful for giving, or for you guys allowing me to have whatever platform I have. It just makes the old shy Kyle from when I was younger uh, very happy. It's yeah. um, it's incredible. That's you can follow awesome. me, you know where to follow me, Mr. K set pretty much everywhere. Six one Indie, you know all that jazz. Yeah. Love you very much. I will say this. That showcase is fantastic. If you haven't already, head on over to Six One over on YouTube. Uh it there's literally no difference between that or any other showcase you'd see. Like from like a PlayStation. It just has way more personality and substance. It's fantastic. Go over there, watch it. But you probably already have already, you know. But if watch you haven't, go for it. Yeah, please. A third time even. Uh you can find me over at Mr. Badbit on Twitter. Um Cause I'm just going through it, guys. I I forgot. Did I take this ibuprofen before we started? I, I know don't you know. grabbed it during the drop. But I don't know if you took any. Way to find out. Please be careful. <laughs> this is a bad bit. This may be my last episode. Who knows? Uh, over on Twitter. Uh, you can follow the podcast over at PS Show for you about Twitter. You can follow the show, the video version, Catch It Live. We do a pre-show. We we try to guess games. We get them right every time, and I never cheat. Never. Uh, over at youtube.com slash at PS Trophy Room. You can follow the Trophy Room wherever you get your podcast service of choice. Please rate us five stars. It really does help us out over on Apple Podcasts and on Spotify. It helps grow our numbers and helps us get notice over on those platforms. And if you can, uh, it really does mean a lot. You head on over to patreon.com slash at PS Trophy Room. Even if it's just a buck, it really does help us out. It gets you exclusive shows and exclusive content like the by the players community show where we talk about the last of us part two that will be up when this episode goes live so with all that said with all that out of the way everybody keep you what's about you keep hunting and keep playing playstation see you guys bye i love you okay we are off i'm a dying man